this is James Cork and you're listening to the MBS show. Now filmed in high definition. Hello and welcome to the MBS show episode 71. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening Norman. Hey Dan, how are you? Very very tired. <laughs> uh, may I ask why? It's been a long day. Started off morning was my final exam and then I just came back from a naturally vocal part 2 with love, great concert and I like shout to my whole choir. I'll do that afterwards later, all right? Okay, okay, okay then. So, you said that you need to um be off early. So, do you have any thing planned tomorrow? Yes, we have one last show at uh 3 p.m. It's in Kaki City Free Space in SS2 Mall if any of you are free and you just want to hear some Nice love songs. No, this is not a cheesy concert. You know, I mean, maybe everyone will tell you that, but we're kind of going in all sorts of directions. We're going to sing French songs. We're going to sing Hebrew songs as well. So if you want to come and enjoy a concert, it's thirty ringgit per per person. You can come on over to Kaki Seni Free Spaces in SS2 Mall. Wow, pipping it out, eh? But don't you think that it'll be a bit too late? <laughs> Awkward Son silence. A- That's not a word. <laughs> Anyway, that was fun. <laughs> I trolled Dan. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> Unlocked. Anyway, moving on to our guest for this week, we got James Crockett. Cro- Cro- James Crochet. <laughs> so we got James. James. Corcho for those who live in Spain. Oh, Corcho. Cork. Cork. So, yeah. How do you say it? Again? It's Cork. 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 Okay, James Cork. Hey there, James. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me in the show. I'm so glad I'm here. No problem. It's yeah, well, I'm I'm having a blast right now because of the previous few minutes I talked to you. I already got a connection that I like you. <laughs> <laughs> And also like the post like like, uh, like the like the like the dog in up. Hi, I'm dog. <laughs> I just met you, and I love you. <laughs> Okay, that was foreshadowing Kali Ray Jepsen. Indeed. And well, um, judging by this false start and how I troll Dan, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> so, Good foreshadowing. <laughs> indeed. So James, um, right. how are you? How are you? No, I'm doing great. The heat here in Spain likes to boil everybody down to a puddle of water. So uh, I, I had to switch, down, switch off the AC because it's making me catch a cold. <laughs> Which is kind of like a paradox here. I'm catching a cold in the middle of the summer. How is that possible? Okay, okay. What is the temperature over there? Because it's I think it's hot as heck here as well. 35 degrees Celsius, I think it is. We're about 34, so we're pretty... Yay, finally a guest who's feeling the heat as well. But then, you, yeah. have, you have to remember, he's dry heat. We're moist heat. It's been dry. Yeah. Actually, I'd rather, rather have dry heat. I have it's experience wet heat. It's better than moist heat. <laughs> it's better than yeah. moist heat. Oh, yeah. dry heat is like a, how to say a sauna. <laughs> Let's say it's just no fun for everyone. <laughs> dry heat is the it's one that you see either. your cat or your dog rolling around the pavement outside. It looks damn good. That's dry heat. <laughs> uh, so anyway, James, before we start the show, we need to ask you for important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? I will never say where the rebel base is. Oh, wait, no, that's not the right answer. Um, uh, can you repeat the question again, please? <laughs> <laughs> who is your favorite character? Uh, favorite character, um, if you go to my Tumblr, you're going to see a huge button that says Raditopia on it. And it's full of Rarity pictures, because my favorite character is Rarity. Because when Rarity does Rarity things, she's totally Rarity and Rarity, Rarity, Rarity. So Rarity is my favorite character. Wow. Wow, I should have clicked on that button first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, honestly speaking, Rarity is a cool character. She's great. Uh Not only is she interesting, but she's also hilarious. The way that David oh, yeah. St. Germain plays the role, it's kind of mind-blowing. She is so fun and over-the-top, but at the same time, she's toned down and, like, gracile, uh, uh, gracious, I mean. Uh, but then she is also completely hyper, and then is all toned down as you can. And, oh, my God, she's so much fun. I know. Uh, and, of course, being her, the artist... I kind of get inspired by her. The whole uh, doing doing dresses for free. I I usually do that for my friends, but they, I don't make dresses. I make them pictures. But yeah, yeah, I can understand. And well, I have to say, Rarity as a character. At first, she's the well. If you don't follow through, it's just like the first few episodes. She's the 
I'm fashionista kind of girl. I want to fashion. Everything's fashion. Money, richer boys and stuff. And later on, I think um, suited for success, that's where you see her bloom. How she, well, breaks out the mold of the standard stereotype of characters. And, well, you can see that she's awesome. Yeah, well, Rarity actually was mind-blowing. I will say from the very first episodes of the show, like uh, the, in the first uh, in the first part of uh, the, the pilot, yeah, she was the girly girl, nothing interesting to her. But in the second part, uh, she cut off her uh, tail to give it to Stephen Magnet, uh, the sea serpent, and I was kind of surprised by that. I didn't expect her to do that. I think that was the moment when I realized. Uh, uh, wow, this show is kind of ex- special because it's surprising me from the very first episode. True, true. And, and, I, and, and that was kind of something that got me as well when I saw her pluck that scale off. I'm like, okay, there's violence in this show. She, I'm like, okay, okay, what did she cut? Did she just kill the serpent? <laughs> you know, let them cross the river in peace? Is that what this show is going to do to me now? <laughs> no, no. If you want to talk about uh, Rarity, you remember the Manticore? Yeah. You remember? Yeah, the Manticore. Yeah, you remember? She kicks it in the face. Yeah. She took first blood. Fuck a kick. <laughs> uh, I just don't know I mean like Rarity she's one of my well in the top six she's up there in the best of top trees I, I really do need to um, reformat my um, top six who's the first through last if I should uh, if I should mention uh, Rarity is my top number one I think on top her but my second my second favorite one right after her is uh, Applejack Hmm, Applejack's interesting. She, well, she needs the love. Like, she needs all the love she can get. I think Applejack is doing a great job by uh, dusting off the, the, the whole, uh, shaking off the whole uh, background pony stigma. Uh, because if you think about it, season three, uh, uh, in season three, there was only one character that had a speaking role in every single episode, and that was Applejack. True, true. But the problem is, um, <clears throat> I, I think the problem with Applejack is she... What's the word I'm looking for? Her, she doesn't have any much problems. All of her problems, well, they tend to recycle themselves in one way or another. Well, her problems... It's not that, they, it's not that she doesn't have uh, a, a, enough different problems. The thing about Applejack is that her problems are very normal. <laughs> Uh, when you think about it, it's very normal. Yeah, very normal problems. Like they are all business related. Uh, this is the kind of problems that you have to face when when you're running a business. Like if you, for example, have a restaurant or a bar, and another bar opens next door and it's taking the clients away from you, that's the super speedy side of Squishy Six Thousand. Um, if you are going to get into a contest to get money or you're trying to get money for your family but you can't and you're ashamed of that situation, you want to get money for them and you don't tell them, you just lie to them until you get the money, uh, that's uh, the last roundup. Uh, that's, those are problems that people have to face with. Even even dealing with family reunions, that is something very normal. Mm, true. So, yeah, I know. Family yeah, reunions. But, but, uh, the, but the other thing is, um, my, the um, Applejack micro series just came out. I read it. Uh, Don't spoil it. it. It's really good, but the problem with that book is it's Applejack. Not the pony, but it's Applejack's all over again. Like, whatever's in the show, bring it to the comics. That's about I, it. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I, did read the, I did read the micro. I have all of them. Yeah, so basically... Of course. Yeah, it's, it's pretty course, good. The, the ending it, is pretty it is, interesting. It is alright. I, like I like all the characters in that comic except Applejack. <laughs> yeah, it's like... That is the problem. Yeah, like, if you want to rate it on a scale of um, who's best... Who has the best comic... I'm uh, sorry. Who has the best um, story, Micro? I think Rarity's number one. And yes, yes. Good um, answer. Yeah, because the, the story's good. The story's good. Seriously, I, I'm not, I'm not um, pandering to you. I'm not giving pandas out to you. Um... You should. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Yes, but, Norman, treat him well. <laughs> yeah, true. But I mean, I'm just giving an honest opinion. Like, Rarity in the micro series, her comic was good. She's number one for me. Number two, I, I don't know. Um, Rainbow Dash is not going to get number two. Um, I think it's going to be Twilight. The story, I agree. The story is really heart-touching. And number three is, uh, I have to say, Pinkie Pie. Her story is awesome. Number four wow. would be... Fluttershy six, uh, sorry, uh, five would be Rainbow and six will be Applejack. 
I absolutely agree with your order. I, I, wow, I cannot even disagree. Um, I think the reason why the rarity one is the most uh, liked by uh, I was kind of surprised because many people love the rarity uh, the rarity uh, uh, comic, and I think they liked it because the guys behind it are the same guys who did the Chrysalis arc. Mm. True, uh, Andy true. Price and Katie Cook did the Chrysalis arc. And they 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 requested IDW. They said anyone can make the other micro series. We want to make the Rarity one because Rarity is their favorite pony. Awesome. So they kind of they kind of called dibs on drawing the Rarity uh, the, the Rarity micro. Yeah, true. But no, I mean seriously, if you think about it, um, Rarity is very fragile. To write Rarity, you need to have a good understanding of the character. Because it's easy to write her. It's easy to destroy her at the same time. Yes. And the way they you did need, it... like, mild schizophrenia? <laughs> no, it's basically... It's something like this. Okay, what does Rarity like? Money, gems, boys, and getting popular. Yeah, you... It's that. It's the stereotypical... What does this character archetype likes? And what they did is... Something different. You have to read it to believe it. And wow, we've... they they took this character that in any other sort of media she would have been the villain. She would have been the pretty girl that everybody hates and nobody wants to hang out with. They turn her into probably one of the most likable and probably relatable characters in media because she has a little she has a little sister. I have a little sister. She is an artist. I am an artist. Like you, you can see why I relate to her so much. Ah. Because yeah, it's it's like she has so many traits. She has so many different character traits that people find her relatable. Uh, those with the same character traits find her uh, uh, relatable. But it's it's very difficult to write well for her, and you can very easily not write well for for Rarity. Indeed, like. But if you, like, like how Rainbow Dash is like Rainbow Dash. What what's her main focus? What's her main point? She likes speech. She wants to be best. Yeah, they did that. They they write her to be fast. They write her to be the best. And it was an okay comic, not the best. So that kind of makes like Pinkie Pie the easiest character to no. do because you can make her anything. No, Pinkie Pie is complex. Her... She's paranoid. That's it. She's almost bipolar. No, no, no. He, not in then, 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 then. Diverse, the, right? the, the thing is. Uh, you you read the book from G.M. Barrow. That's why you know more. The thing is, just push the book aside and take what you see on TV. I mean, even before this, I also had the notion that she is paranoid and almost bipolar in that way. Yeah, but what they did was, they didn't take that. They basically, well, it's Pinkie Pie. Just imagine Deadpool and insert shenanigans. Oh, yeah, I forgot we're talking about the comic. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about comics and we haven't reached that part yet. Anyway, um, let's move on to the second question. Distraction, yay! Yes, we are on the first question and we've taken like 15 minutes already. Oh my God. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> aboard the MBS show. It's Rarity, what? that's why. <laughs> so anyway, she's Rarity. She's the best party. Come on. Indeed. Okay, uh, ne- next question. Next question. So the next question is, what's your favorite episode? Many people ask me this and I always give the, the default answer that my favorite episode is a tie between three episodes. Oh. Like, I, I really like Sonic Rainbow, uh, Sweet and Elite, and Sleepless in Ponyville. Mm-hmm. As you see, one episode for each of the different seasons. Oh, okay. uh, be- because of how much they mean to I mean, both all three episodes uh, feature heavily, mm-hmm. like, two of my favorite characters. Or, like, they, they feature them in a, in a big way. And, of course, Sweet and Elite is all about variety. <laughs> However, I am not going to say any of those. I am going to go with my favorite underrated episode. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, my favorite underrated episode is Hurricane Fluttershy. Ooh, that's a good one. Good answer. But okay, do explain yourself because no rarity at all. Yes, no rarity at all. And to be honest with you, Fluttershy is my least favorite of the main six. <laughs> oh, we uh, have, that, those I, are fighting words. <laughs> no, no, I used to have uh, the same thing. I used to have the exact same thing because I didn't like Twilight, but I like Lesson Zero. Oh, there you go. So it's you, you, you will understand where I'm coming from here then. Yes, I do, completely. So, uh, for starters, I like the concept of the tornado because I'm a, a twist that is one of my favorite movies of all time, so I like the concept of the tornado. But that's not why I like the episode. I like the idea of 
uh, I like the moral of every bit counts. Even if you have very little to contribute, uh, don't think that's not enough. Uh, battles and other things, important things, have been won with the, the smallest numbers. You will have no idea how many times just the decision of one person has changed history. And uh, to have Fluttershy being in, that, in the middle of all that, struggling with her own fears and uh, is finally swallowing them and going like, no, I'm going to help even if I have this, the weakest wing power of them all. That is inspiring because that's how I feel many times. Like uh, uh, I help out in my house by paying the bills and sometimes I don't have enough and I pay like one bill or the, uh, or, and that's it and I'm like, oh my God, I feel so useless. But then my father comes up and he's like, hey, thank you for covering that bill this month. It saved us a lot of money and I'm like, oh wow, that little thing helped so much. So, uh, Hurricane Flutters inspires me and it surprises me that this fandom, which is basically, it's based around people joining together and adding the little bit they have to form a giant pile of help. They don't take that episode into account because Hurricane Fluttershy is this fandom. It's and it's so it makes me so mad that people forget that episode so often. Mm, true, but that's um, true. I, I think that's, that's right. People do overlook that episode. No, I, yeah. I think for me is that the episode is good. I, okay, why I like that episode is because of the Fluttershy training montage music. That Which music is, is awesome. And I, I don't know, it's like um, people tend to forget it because of, okay, it's nightmare fuel for most people because, oh my god, those eyes, those eyes. Oh, the eye hallway. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about the eye hallway. <laughs> that is the scariest thing in the history of this show. I know. <laughs> it's, it's the like... eye hallway. But, Remember, okay. this is a show for kids. I mean, we, we have a previous guest by the name of Jimmy Lee who used that scene and he put that Michael Jackson song, I always feel like somebody's watching me in the background when it's happening. <laughs> no, but, but honestly, uh, I like we that... We love you, Jimmy! <laughs> uh, honestly, I like that scene because of one thing. Fluttershy's reaction. Look at her face and oh tell me... God. That oh, this is pure, pure terror. I know. It's so cool. I don't know why, but it looks so cool. Uh, uh, kudos to Andrea Liefman for such a great acting in that episode. I mean, more so than usual. True, true. It was heartbreaking true, performance. Heartbreaking. Yeah, true, indeed. So, okay, moving on to our third question. Wow. How many minutes have we spent on talking about the first two questions? Oh, my. Too many. Half an hour. Oh, but So, any, <laughs> anyway, um, yes. question number three is, how did you become a fan of the show? Oh, dear. If we spend so much time talking about something so superfluous, this is going to take us all day. Uh, <laughs> okay, now, short story. Uh, I'm going to go for the short story. So, uh, in late 2010, I lost my job. And I was feeling very depressed, and my best friend was very worried about me, so he said, Hey, I, I know a way to cheer you up. Uh, how about we watch My Little Pony, and you check the episodes, you, you check the show and tell me how it is. And previous to that, he's been trying to talk me into, into watching the show, saying that it was very good, that it was fun, that it was really entertaining, that one of the characters gets an anvil to the head, and I'm like... <laughs> I, I was like, no, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. But then after losing my job, I was so depressed that I was like, you know what? Let's watch it. Uh, I need something to cheer myself up. So we watched the episode, the first episode, uh, the two-parter pilot. And I was like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> and I kept watching. Oh, wow. This is amazingly good. Uh, I was like, when I reached episode six, which is uh, the episode with Trixie, uh, Postbusters, and uh, I was watching Twilight lifting that Ursa Minor over her head. And I was like, I was having massive magic girl type of show vibes to this. And then after the episode ended, I had to sit back, staring into the void saying, what is wrong with me? I, I love this. This show is way too good for its own right it doesn't have this the right to be so good <laughs> and then so the more I watched it the more I wanted uh, I watched up until episode 16 which was the latest episode that got released um, 
Oh, I didn't so expect any before both of us. Yeah, I I, I, I became a baron in like uh, February 2011. Um, I I was like, oh god, I, I love this, and I I just started doing fan art. I was posting it on my, on my website, and people were coming. Some of them were uh, positive, other negative, blah, 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 all that. But yeah, I mean, it was that simplicity and those characters that grabbed me, and the 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 potential this show has to keep surprising me, which after three seasons, you will think it slows down, but it doesn't. Even to this day, I keep getting surprised with episodes in season three. I was like, whoa, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that. Oh, <laughs> which is what brought me in the first place. I, I, I like being surprised. So yeah, uh, that's how I got into the show. I don't want to um, rain on your story here, but your, your story reminds me of this um, uh, parody, soft park parody I saw on EQD, like how the soft park characters became bronies. Oh, oh the yeah, one that, that came out today. Yeah, yeah, and I the, didn't saw that one yet. I didn't saw it. Ba- basically, it. basically, the whole thing from start to end is basically of how. You became a brony. It's basically like, what is this? No, why don't we just watch it? I love it. Now, here's the best part of the whole thing. It's that that kind of plot is in the show in Read It and Weep. <laughs> it's the exact That is one of my plot. favorite episodes. <laughs> like, being a brony, why don't we put that whole concept in the show to towards Daring Do? And it's like, oh my god, these guys are geniuses. <laughs> True indeed. Well, that, and it, that yeah. happens, uh, but that happens with Brony. That happens with anything else. Like when you <coughs> when you watch Star Trek for the first time and you are like, "Oh, this is so silly. I don't want to get into it." By the end of the first episode, oh my god, what is the next one? Or, <laughs> uh, uh, says Star Trek says Battleship, Battlestar Galactica, or Doctor uh, Who, Babylon Five, Doctor Who. So yeah, anything that is worth watching that is uh, subculture related, it's definitely going to grab you. No, but it has this kind of thing that you... Because bronies, unlike the other fandoms, it comes with a bit of an uncomfortable conscience as when you start, it's like, why am I watching this? Like, Star Trek, okay, you know they're Trekkies. Maybe bronies, you might not be aware of them so much. So, Rainbow Dash comes out, I'm an egghead. Twilight must never know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> a spider. Like little secret. So now that's the problem. Every, I think we've all gone through that phase. It's like, okay, there's just the two of us. The cat is out of the bag now. Everyone yeah. knows that I want to be honest. Oh, God. What is my family going to think about this? Oh, <laughs> this yeah, old... Interesting uh, interesting thing that you mentioned family. Question number four. What do your family and friends think about your love for the show? I did it intentionally, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Segway! Um, and my father doesn't care about it uh, because he's like, oh, you watch it? Oh, okay. Anyway, you can watch whatever the hell you want. Like, because my, my father is a huge fan of Betty Boop. Oh. Uh, ah! 1920s cartoon. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we know that one. He, he, he has Betty Boop paraphernalia in his Ooh. bedroom because he loves Betty Boop. So he is like, you know what? I like Betty Boop. Do you like ponies? Kid. Let's you party! Like, you're like your father. So I am like, cool, no problem. Uh, my I wish I had a dad with a fandom. <laughs> my mother hated it. For the longest time, she hated it. But then uh, one day I was like, you know, mom, you should watch an episode with me. And she is a huge Indiana Jones fan. <laughs> oh, Jack so, <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to I'm going to put you this episode. Let me see what you think of it. And she was grumbling and stupid ponies. Stupid pony, I hate this pony. By the end of it, she was like, you know what, that's actually pretty cool. So I, 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 she didn't watch any other episodes after that, but she understands why she understands why I like it, why I like it, and what I see in it uh, enough for making me a fan of it. Okay. And and your my si- and, uh, I'm not done. I'm not done because okay. my sister, my sister is the best of all, because she loves the show. She loves it. She watches it with me. She loves. She loves Discord. Her favorite pony is Pinkie Pie. Yay! And her favorite, uh, her second favorite is Sekora. <laughs> and uh, she she has toys of them both. Actually, I bought her a Sekora blind bag. Ooh! Wait, and, this is uh, a good blind bag. Pinkie oh, yeah. Pinkie Pie brushable. Was that she a takes strike the or was it? Uh... No, uh, I I bought them on on a website that it came with this Pony Spa set that it came oh, with uh, yeah, Lotus, yeah. Pinkie Pie, and Sakura. 
and she takes them everywhere. Where when whenever there is a there is a long trip, she takes them with her. Wow. And th- this is the funny thing: she is seventeen years old. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. <laughs> like, okay, I am twenty eight, all right, but she is seventeen years old, and she's like, yeah, I take Sakura and Pinkie Pie with me whenever I, I am uh, ar- around or anything, and uh, and she she likes them, she loves the she loves the show. She, I, I feel comfortable having someone that I live with that I can watch ponies with. That was something like me when back in the day when I was a decorator and I, I had this little toolkit I called the party cannon and there's a picky blind bag in there. <laughs> Follows me along. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool. cool. Now my boss will look like, what is that? It's just basically a toolbox, but it contains all my balloons and my, you know, strings and ropes and stuff. Ah, and there's picky cool. pine signal all over my helium tank. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what about your friends? Oh, my friends. Uh, well, my friends were the ones who got me into it. Uh, like my internet friends, uh, my, my, my friend from Scotland and my friend from Texas, they both got me into it. And after that, I, I, I went, okay, I used to be in the furry fandom. I was kind of like, uh, there, uh, here and there in Fur Affinity. Uh, a couple of people didn't like that I got into ponies, so they stopped talking to me. Uh-huh. But this is the best part. For every person who stopped talking to me in the furry fandom, ten more people showed up in the brony fandom. Wow. <laughs> That's so, great. So, I, I think I lost, like, four or five people in the furry fandom. I gained, like, 40 or 50. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Welcome to the new age. And those people, that those friends that I have in real life... Um, they got into it as well <laughs> because they kind of followed me on this because they, they were like, oh, are you watching My Little Pony, now, Victor? You are kind of like grown up. You are 26 uh, when I started it. Uh, you are 26 years old. Shouldn't you be watching something your age? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Shouldn't you be watching Adver- Adventure Time? Yeah, you should watch Adventure Time. This is for grown ups. I'm like, oh, you guys. Watch a couple of episodes that come back to me. And they're like, I'm not watching a show for little girls. I am manly. I'm going to go play Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 2, and then I'm going to go lift some weights. <laughs> Do you even lift? Then you still don't lift. So, okay. Two days later, hey, I'm sorry. I watched the show and I really like it. Vicky Pai is just funny. I'm sorry. They apologize. Okay. They come to, not all of them. One of them actually came to me and said, "Hey, do you want to watch ponies with me?" I'm like, "Sure." And I didn't even discuss it. But a couple of them went to me and said, "Hey, I'm sorry, I acted like a jerk. The, the show is actually really good." I I watched all of season one in one night, twenty six episodes. I think a lot of us are guilty of watching a whole season in one night. Wow! Even after watching it the first time, we watch it again. And <laughs> I did. I did. God, I, I back in the day, I used to marathon the show every day. <laughs> I swear, I think you're the Spanish incarnation of me. <laughs> Except that I can't draw for nuts. Oh, come on. Any, anyway, if I can draw, anyone can. No, no, no. Great. You see my hand right there. <laughs> it's a translator for English to Sanskrit, if you want to say. <laughs> oh, wow. Go to a science museum. They will they will thank you for that. They need someone to, to transcribe Sanskrit. Uh, they told me I should be a doctor. <laughs> I have the headlights uh, for it. <laughs> but uh, you have like the TARDIS that has a, a method to translate every single language in the world. Your hand is like that. <laughs> no, it's a one-way street and then it needs a second translator. That's what they can't afford. <laughs> you can Oops. translate Esperanto. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, um, of which I just had a Mandarin exam this morning. It was like... Oh, good luck with the result. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's like I remember back when I was in high school, and they said, "Okay, now your next section, you have to go, you have to write it with ink brush." And I'm like, "No, no, 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 no! <laughs> I am not painting <laughs> language exam." Oh, boys! So, Sorry, but you have to. That's that, I think that's how Mandarin works. You need is, to be a, yeah. You need to have a very loose wrist in order to uh, uh, Look, draw the words properly. And then it just happens that you dip your pen, you dip the brush into the ink, you're all ready, you're getting this artistic side, the tip touches the paper, the whole paper turns black. Because <laughs> yes. it's just so thin, it's like tissue paper. Mm. Or you, you soak the, pe- the the brush way too much, and then a giant drop falls, and you're like, no! Yeah, it's happened. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well. And all the paper gets ruined. Not everyone can be artists. Oh, well. So, that was the four basic questions and thank you James for answering them and 
Wow, we had oh. fun. No problem. Uh, well, uh, I never shut up, so I guess that makes up for it. Oh, well, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> and let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. Throughout the month of July, we will be asking questions. Collect all four questions and send your answer to us via email at the MBS show at gmail.com and send a chance to win the My Little Pony Elements of Harmony book. Question one was asked last week. So this week, we'll be asking question number two. Stay tuned for the questions. The first person to submit with all four correct answers will be the winner. Good luck and have fun, guys. So, um... Basically, I'll ask four questions throughout the month of July. You collect them, answer them correctly, and stand a chance to win the, well, basically the encyclopedia for The My Little Pony from season one to season three. May I say that book is really good. I just got my copy from Amazon. Ooh. The, f- the first eight pages are a recreation of the very first book that appears on the, on the pilot episode of the series. I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> it's... That amount of detail, that that little touch, makes it so special. No, it's like, okay, when you open to book, uh, well, the first cover, Once Upon a Time. <laughs> oh god, that was awesome. It's the magical land of Equestria, and I'm like, oh! <gasps> <laughs> this book is so good, seriously. I'm, give, I'm basically giving it away. I'm basically giving it away. So, all you have to do is answer four questions correctly, and you get a book, no matter where you are. We won't call you. A, we won't call you an AK. We promise. Anyway. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't, but he will. <laughs> so anyway, let's. Nerd. So, ladies and gentlemen, if James wins this book, you know what to do. <laughs> yes, James, you are, you are also eligible for this. If you can answer. Uh, but I already have my copy. It would be unfair if I participate as well. And you can autograph it. The price goes up. <laughs> oh that, no! If anything, the price will go down. What are you saying? I will. No, you know what? If I if I participate and I get the book, I don't think I will participate. But if I do, if I ever go to a convention, I am going to give the book to all the voice actors and all the celebrities of the show, sign it, and then I will, I'm going to put it for auction for oh, charity. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So good thing you that's said charity because it's like you know what Eminem says: <laughs> if I sign well, something for you and I see it on eBay when you come home tonight, I'm gonna be under your bed. <laughs> Oh my! I thought Andrea Liefman was the one who said that. It came from Eminem. <laughs> well, oh I, I, there was a story of a guy who was to a was in a brownie convention and he had uh, Andrea Liefman sign a Pinkie Pie toy. And when Andrea Liefman asked him to ask him, "Who do I sign it for?" and the guy said, "Oh, anybody. Just just sign your name." And Andrea Liefman was like, "eBay," and the guy was like, "Maybe." So, Andrea Liebman signed it, but she looked at him like the stare of a thousand years. <laughs> oh kind of like, I am looking at you and I'm going to make you, I'm giving you the stare. A Fluttershy stare. Oh, it God. Right from the source. <laughs> That's the most yeah. authentic damn Fluttershy stare you're going to get. Oh, my. So, yeah, I wouldn't upset Andrea Liebman. Yeah, I mean, what's the... T- sh- Sorry. Um, why just- go to all the trouble just to get an autograph and get a few bucks? Like, it's not worth it if you think about it. It's definitely not not worth the trouble to upset the PAs just because yeah, you true. want to have, uh, uh, just because you want to sell it on eBay and get some dollars. It's not worth the money. Yeah, you're looking like a jerk. Yeah, yeah true. Well, okay, let's let's break it down. Going to let's say BronyCon tickets are what fifty dollars, seventy maybe. Wow. Then um, about forty five a day, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so quite expensive, but. You're going to spend all that money and you're going to piss off one of the voice actors? Yeah. Uh-uh. Not good. Then not to mention traveling fee? Then, ugh. Yeah, from Malaysia. No, no, just say the US. You have to just remember local guy eBay doing it. Like, it's not worth it. No. Definitely not worth it. No. Because when you think about it, all the money that you gain from the from the eBay auction is lost on the on the convention and the trip. Yeah. Just go there and have fun. Don't 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 piss off everybody. True you know, Optimus indeed. Prime will be like on your back. Where'd you get the elements of harmony? <laughs> eBay. <laughs> eBay. <laughs> oh boy. And that could eBay. be a, that, that could be a great twist. Somebody should do a comic on that, you know, that first 
book is like Luna. You don't have the sixth element. The spark didn't work. I found it on eBay. <laughs> oh boy. We found the old spark on eBay. <laughs> So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Nightmare Moon Talks! Last week, we mentioned that Toys R Us will be selling the Nightmare Moon figures. And in that episode, we speculate what she will say. Now, this week, we got some answers. And this is what she says. Mwahahahaha. I would love it if you would style my mane. Oh, she said hair. Okay. My star breads are fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, random magical sound. I will light up the night sky. Fairy Let's celebrate the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Dan. We, we can't sing that song. Um, I fly through the night. I am like my moon. Do you recall my legend? Um, most of these are okay, but I would love it if you would style my hair. Um, no. <laughs> anyway, links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, um, I'll go for Dan. What do you think? Nothing that we speculated last week came out. <laughs> well, some of it, some of it. But uh, come on. It's like, I am Nightmare Moon. It's like, yeah. what is that supposed to mean? So, anyway, James, what do you think? I'm thinking, first of all, how long is it going to take to a brownie, a savvy brownie, to take the voice box and change it for the actual lines on the show? Oh, but that's going to be awesome. I don't know. Is it? That's going to be easy. easy. No, no. Uh, yeah, the, the, actually, I know uh, there was a guy on YouTube who took a Celestia toy and was turning it into Nightmare Moon, and the guy managed to uh, take the lines from the show, like, the night will last forever, <laughs> and put it in the to- into the Celestia toy. So now that you have the job done, I think it's easy. Um, however, what I am really thinking on is look at this toy line uh, that started with pink Princess Celestia and now we have black and edgy with dark blues Nightmare Moon the very first My Little Pony villain to get a toy in the whole history of the franchise Uh, Generation 1 didn't have a single toy out of the villains like Katrina, Tyrek the Smooth, the Three Witches none of them got a toy Actually, Smooth got a toy. His name is Gag now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad, bad Daniel, bad Daniel. Four version of Smooth. That's true. Yeah, that is. What you say, James, is true. I think Nightmare Moon is the first villain to have her own toy line. It is. Uh, when the when the uh, fan favorites came out, that package that had the Nightmare Moon uh, toy with Vinyl Scratch, Lyra, Trixie, and Pinkie I think Pinkie it was Pinkie Pie and Rainbow yeah, thank you, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash. Uh, when that came out, the box was very dark pink and black. And I was like, that is so... That, is, that, that stands out in the pink aisle of Toys R Us. Indeed. It, it's like so cool. And, that, and now they are going to do the same because I, I, I haven't seen the box of uh, Nightmare Moon. But do you think that Toy is going to be on a... Pink, cuddly, waddly, white, and purpley. No, I, I, I seen the box. I, I seen the box, and I'm not sure it's a prototype or not, but it's dark. <laughs> so I am like, that toy should be next to Megatron and the latest Beyblades. I mean, that is so <laughs> edgy and okay. cool looking. True, true. Okay, um, here I'm gonna take it down a notch. If if we're gonna say uh, toys for girls, it might fit well with Monster High. Yeah, that's going to be closer to that. Exactly. Monster High. Monster High is cool, actually. I like Monster High. Um, and it's in that very same line. Yeah, true. It's like, because it's, it's, it's a toy more for teenage girls than, than little five-year-old girls. True. And it's, I don't know why, but it's, it's just... I find it cool, but I would be getting it because... I don't know. Um, I don't care for that kind of thing because it's too big and... It's not for me. Uh, I won't be getting it because it's not Chrysalis. <laughs> oh, talking about Chrysalis. I can't afford it. Talking about Chrysalis, there's going to be a... I, I don't know, it's a queen set that's going to come out. And in that set, yeah, they the have... Fun, yeah, the fan favorite set too. It has Chrysalis in it. But it's so lazy. Uh, if you look at the... If you look at the Chrysalis toy carefully, you can see it has the horseshoes of Celestia and Nightmare Moon, and the holes are just painted on. They are not, like, they are not actually... What? Yeah! 
Yeah, I know. But, but the thing is, it's the, the the thing is, you have to remember, it's kind of um, we have this mold thingy that we use in the factory. So why don't we just use it? I don't want to understand that. I wanted to make a new mold. No, no but they, it takes but money. They, but yeah. Well, you know, they they are doing a blind duck of chrysalis, and that one actually looks really good because they have the wings and they have the horn, and they, I think they even have the holes on the legs. So mm. the blind bag, once again, looks better than the actual big toy. True. But the thing is, with the toys, they have derpy in that set. So it yes. might be worth it to get. No, for the, for the, thing, for the derpy who's brushable, that's, it, it is definitely worth it. I mean, it, it comes with the derpies and everything. Yeah, true, true. It, it's, it's worth it. It's worth your money. Yeah. I, I wouldn't buy it because derpy is not my favorite background character, but... Uh, for those of you who love Derby, that, that's that's there, guys. Go get it. Well, might might soon might do it soon. And talking about Derby and other pony toys, uh, Dan, why did you take this one? All right. Now the next news topic. It's a hot topic because hot topic teases Funko ponies and made them available for pre-order. Hot Topic recently teased us with a picture of the next set of vinyl ponies, and it looks just like the next batch of ponies will be Pinkie Pie and Lyra Heartstrings. So yeah, they didn't lie to us. This set follows the previous set in one in 24 ponies will receive the sparkly clear chase figure variant. Sorry, no choice. And the good news is Pinkie Pie and Heartstrings will be available now at Hot Topic's website. You can pre-order them. And if you act now, you can use the discount code to get up to 75 US dollars off. Terms and conditions apply. You can find the pictures, links, and for the first time on the MBS show, discount codes in the show notes. So, gentlemen, like, don't like. Norman? I like, I want, must get. <laughs> <laughs> it look really good. I'm looking at a picture right now and wow, I want a crystal pony that size. Really? You want the crystal? I don't want the crystal. I, I want just want the normal one. Cute. So what about you, James? Uh, you know, I have kind of a problem with the Funko uh, toys and not because of the quality or anything. They look really show accurate. My problem is that they are too big. Oh, really? No. Oh. Yeah, the, look, the way I look at it, if they were the same size of the brushables, that would be cool because it's easy to storage. Now, those ones are actually big. They are the size of a fashion uh, fashion brushable, no, no, which is quite quite tall. No, not really. Um, the fashion brushables are bigger than the fun coats. No, but do you know what I mean? They are in yeah. halfway between the brushables and the fashion brushables. Mm, but true, they are true. closer to the fashion brushables than the, than the brushables themselves. So it was like, if they were smaller, I would be all over them. But mm. for me, too big. They look great. But like the hard strings, oh my god, they nail the hair on, on her head. I'm just blown away by that. How, awesome, how silly right, is that? Isn't it? It, looks, it looks brilliant. It looks so accurate. But too big for me. I don't know where to put it. Uh, if, I, if I lived alone, that would be cool, but... My mom already has prob- <laughs> enough problems with my uh, almost full-size rarity plushie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh... I'm not even joking. I do have one. <laughs> Ooh. Might, might ask to see some pictures later. But anyway, um, I don't know. Like with Pinky, we were talking about mains. Look at Pinkie Pie. And I don't know how to say it, but wow. Pinkie Pie mains looks almost so accurate. Poofy. It's so cute. It's yeah, so I really want that. It's like the best darn mold main I've ever seen. It's like so cute. Looks like cotton candy. <laughs> so close exactly. to the show in fact. Yeah. Well, I, I, I might get uh, Lyra and um, Pinkie Pie just for collection's sake and also maybe a sonic screwdriver of the 10 Doctor and a shirt. <laughs> You're really addicted to the Doctor, aren't you? Uh, just finished season 7. Woohoo! So let's move on to the next news. And in the next one is Cool Pony Covers for IDW October uh, solicitation for 2013. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. I'm going to read it now. So, the website Bleeding Cool posted an article talking about IDW's October solicitations for 2013. In the article, it talks about the up-and-coming comics that IDW publish. For the My Little Pony comics, they have announced some interesting info on it. Expect to see My Little Pony... Pony Tales Volume 1, a collection of all the main six micro series comics. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic number 12, the 12th issue of the mainline comics. Love the cover, I have to say myself. 
and My Little Pony 2013 Annual Spotlight IDW Sticks on Equestria Girls. Links and pictures can be... F- I didn't put pictures. Um, anyway, um, links and pictures soon to be added can be found in the show notes. So guys, you have to see the covers. It's all good. And I'll ask Dan. Dan, what do you think? I haven't seen the covers yet. I'm opening the link right now. Yeah, but um, okay, I'm going to open the link too because I just need to um, look at it again because it's so much fun. And break down from the beginning. They have the micro series all packed into one... Um, what's that thing I said? That Heart- is an adorable cover. Hardcover? No, not hardcover. Um, trade back. Uh, trade, trade paper back. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Trade paper back. Yeah, that's uh, they just call it a book nowadays. Eesh. <laughs> They no, want like, to be. They trade, want to be but, but they, they used to call them comic books. <laughs> now they call them trade paperbacks. No, the day, you, you remember that time they used to call it comic books? Yeah, Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, with the Ponytails Volume One, this is a good book for anyone who wants to uh, collect the micro series, but don't want to go through one at a time. And the cover is really cute. Yeah, it's adorable. It's like them doing photo booth faces, like. <laughs> And you know, when uh, Pinky found a MacBook and turned on photo booth and they went, Wee! Ah, okay. I like Fluttershy's face. <laughs> yeah. She's all like, Ooh. That is That is a Rainbow Dash pose, right? I, I just like Rarity. Like, what is she trying to do? <laughs> She's puffing her cheeks. <laughs> okay. She's um, like going, ah. I, I just love that look on Shining Armor's face. In the other okay, face. okay. It's like, Guys, guys, guys. I have to oh, tell you God. something. I have to tell you something. Um, enlarge the Shining Armor book. And okay, if you notice, look at what he's holding. He's holding a Crown Royal ice bag. Yeah! He's, he's a D&D nerd. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. He's a neckhead. <laughs> it's not just any egghead. He's a D&D nerd. Look, Monsters uh, Manual number two. Oh, God. I love one of us. He's one of us. <gasps> one of him. us. One of us. This is so awesome. I just, I just love that look on his face. Yeah, it's like, it's like oh, I look so awkward and nerdy. Oh, okay, okay. In the last frame, then he look towards the, he just look at you and just say, "Now I know how you feel." No, okay, guys. Uh, here's another thing I need to mention. There's a Tumblr I've been following, and that Tumblr is called Us High School Cadence. Oh, it has that teenage, that cute teenage cadence uh, style, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like okay. The, the thing is, if you notice in the official comic book. Cadence is uber popular and Shining Armor is shy to approach Cadence while yep. in the fandom what we got is the opposite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what? What? It's like, I mean, okay, Cadence is pretty but I don't like her that much. And then it's like, when I see this one, it's like, oh, Shining, come on, cheer up. Oh, I, I, One day she's going to be your wife, then you can suck. You never tried to approach a girl and try to, like, tell her anything, did you? <laughs> no, that's why I'm single it's for 21 of, years. It's kind of like that. And the way they are they are approaching Shining Armor, I can totally relate. <laughs> yeah, true. That happens. That so happens. Yeah, true. I don't know, it's just like... I, I just love the cover. I, I can't believe that I'm talking about covers. But I just love the cover because Shining Armor is a D&D nerd. Like us. Yay! Quick, Shining Armor, roll for D- charm. <laughs> I'm not a D&D nerd, but I love the cover. <laughs> you fail, Shining Armor. <laughs> now you won't be able to go go along with Cadence. You have only one dice roll. Only one dice roll. <laughs> and you were rolling a D4. <laughs> it falls off the table. That means a re-roll, right? How <laughs> many so, points did you put on Intimidate? <laughs> oh my god. No, no, not Intimidate. Um, Charm, was it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, moving on to the last cover is Equestria Girls. IDW's take. Who do I have taught? That is really, really good. What? Doing the exact pose of the, you know, the the, the, the trademark My Little Pony pose of the six of them. Uh, <laughs> that one. It's perfect. I wanted to do that in real life and I couldn't get it right. <laughs> Got no. a bunch of bronies around and tried to do that pose in real life and like, that doesn't work. No, you We're do. all standing on all fours looks like shit. And like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you have a reference. <laughs> Yeah, that's how do how do I pony with two legs? <laughs> I don't know, but become legs. Oh. But honestly speaking, I can't wait. I am going to buy all of the books because 
Their cover is just awesome. I know there's a saying, I know there's a saying, don't judge don't a book by its by cover, bro. Yeah, but with this, I don't care. Blow caution to the wind. I'm just going to buy it. No, but in this case, these covers are works of art as it is. And you can just frame the cover up if you don't like the comic. True indeed, true indeed. I want to, I want to frame the Shannon Armor one. <laughs> just for the D&D reference. It's like, oh, wow. But um, my final take on this is, I just love the covers. The art is awesome. Just awesome. So, and I agree with you. The covers look brilliant. Um, if they have so many different covers for each of the comics, it's for a good reason. So people can collect them. Because they look so good. I know. It's and like... Then, uh, wow. The thing is, I don't mind buying a physical, physical copy of book number 12 and asking whoever draw it to sign it for me. Because it's... Way too awesome. Like I, I want to go. I want to just sit down with them and ask them what was going through your mind when you were doing this. Like, you know, you do that every week on the show, so you know, might just just call them on. <laughs> I hope so. But honestly speaking, I just love that cover because for me, I may not play D and D, but I am so interested in playing D and D. So anyway, because Shining Armor made it cool. No, um, I was interested in it before Shining Armor. But anyway, moving on to the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have James Cork. Is it? Oh, it's my it's my cue. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <sighs> um, hello, people of the internet. I am person who draws <laughs> ponies in free time and somewhat gets kind of like a fun following from it. Wait, I'm doing it wrong. Can I get another shot? Sure. Please do. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's uh, okay. Joking. No, We're okay. not live. Hey, guys. That's, that's the beauty of not being live. <laughs> no, he was being comedic then. Editing program. <sighs> he was being comedic then. You you spoil it. <laughs> right. Over your head. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you. I need to go and sleep. <laughs> no, don't Stop sleep. Playing. No. No, but Stop. anyway, on, on a serious note, we got James Cork. I think it's Cork because I, I, I have bad memories. But anyway, he's... Uh, a... just, just, just pronounce it like if you pronounce it without without the C. Just go for Cork. Okay. Like you're pronouncing the K and uh, that's it. Cork. Okay. So James Cork, a uh, Divina artist, pony, Tumblr guy, and all around awesome dude. So we have him on this week. And thanks, James, for coming on. And how have you been doing? Are you enjoying yourself? I am loving this. Uh, kind of blown away because... <laughs> Ever since I started into this fandom, I've been I've seen these uh, these podcasts coming up, like uh, you guys, and then we have Bronyville, then uh, we have the guys at Everfree Network uh, doing their own thing as well, uh, and I am like, they are so awesome, these guys. They are interviewing all these well-known artists and Bronies. I wish I could be there sometime, but but I am just one out of many. Uh, how am I going to be able to get the spotlight and? I just decided, like, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna try and make something like special. I'm just gonna go focus doing my thing. It turns out, I'm doing my thing. Got me quite a lot of people following me, which surprised me even more. I'm like, oh, maybe I should keep doing my thing. So I could, I keep doing my thing. More people keep coming. I'm like, oh wow. So um, James, cool. um, for people who might not know who you are, what you do, um, what do you do? What do you do? What What is your thing? Okay. Uh, I am not good with video. I am just alright with fanfic, so I focus on the other, on the only thing that seems to be uh, the universal language when it comes to this fandom, and that is artwork. Uh, I have the graphic designer degree, uh, which means that I can work with Photoshop uh, fairly okay. Uh, so I do my best out of the out of the silly ideas that come to my head, and I try my best to put them down on uh, digit, uh, this digital canvas. I use I use I use traditional media as well, so I put that on paper too. Uh, usually, I just come up with ideas, but lately I've been doing something that I call request streaming. Ooh. That I have people. Uh, I, I you, you know what streaming is, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, so I fire up a stream, and when I am drawing live for people, I have them both for a subject and a character. Like I give them five character names and five subjects. And then they vote for the most, uh, the one they like the most, and I draw that. Like, for example, Spike dressed as R2-D2 as he is going to crash into a firework factory that is going to be demolished. <laughs> but I draw it. No, seriously, that is on my DeviantArt. I, I, I know, I've I seen it. And, like, that's why I'm laughing. 
<laughs> or like I don't know uh, Applejack dressed as Samus Aran in Metroid. Ah, my droid. So that's that's what I've been doing, uh, drawing lately. People uh, stuff that people request me to draw. I I am also open for commissions. Uh, but I think the thing that I am that I am most well known for, if I can say that, is that uh, I came up with this. Very simple idea that I was surprised nobody else came up with. Uh, the best pony logos, <laughs> uh-huh. which basically consists on uh, taking a pony, uh, taking the My Little Pony logo, and edit it so it looks like the, the style of that character, like the tail or the cutie mark, the color scheme. And I put, like, My Little Pony so-and-so is best pony. Uh, I started with Rarity because, of <laughs> course, and then I just moved forward, and I think the last one I did was Discord. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen it. And like, I'm in this one group called the Malaysian Brony Society, and I've been seeing that um, that picture popped up on the group for some time now. And I was wondering, wow, that's really good. I wonder who drew it. I, 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 I wonder who drew it and what what program did he use? And basically, like, how and why and just basically how. And, well, I'm talking to you now. Uh, it is a surprise. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was like an offside thing that it was never going to catch on because it was so simple that I I thought somebody else had done it. I was like, ah, oh, maybe there is like a couple of best pony logos out there. Maybe somebody just came up with it. I'm just going to do a rarity one because I have never seen one, and I'm just going to like leave it. And then next day I go to Equestria Daily and uh, Serial Velocity, <laughs> who is an even he's an even bigger fan of rarity than I am. He posts the Rarity's Best Pony logo. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. And it was linked to my DeviantArt. And all of a sudden I have people asking me, oh, my God, do Applejack Nest, do Applejack Nest, or do so-and-so. Do so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, wow, uh, okay. So I started doing ones, like, uh, I think the next one I did was Rainbow Dash. Yep, yep. Uh, and then Luna. And so, uh, then Luna, Octavia, which is my favorite background pony, hmm? uh, Celestia, and they, they all just keep following one after the other. And... What, what I love the most of this, it, it was that it inspired other people to draw as well. Really? So, yeah, I had like, uh, I had, there were some people, uh, there, there was an artist who worked, who did a Twilight is best pony, and then a Applejack is best pony, then I think somebody else did Fluttershy is best pony, Spike is best pony as well, they, I love that one, Spike is best pony, that's, <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, Spike is best pony, come on, everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, and I was like, wow, not only this is kind of everywhere, but I'm also inspiring people. That's great. And then I have my friend Nick. He comes at me and says, man, I'm on Facebook and everyone is changing their avatars to these best pony logos. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And he's like, yeah, look at that. And I'm like, oh, my do- oh my God, I drew that. And he's like, what? You're behind that? <laughs> they are all over Reddit. And I'm like, Joe, hit the floor, made a hole in it. <laughs> What? <laughs> and yeah, all over Reddit as well. And it was like, oh, wow, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, what have what, you done? <laughs> what have I started? And uh, uh, now, I am, uh, now I am kind of like taking it as uh, some sort of commission type. Huh? Because it takes so little time to draw that. It's like the Discord one took me one hour. And that is, it's one hour because it has so many elements. But like the one I did of... Uh, I think it was someone, so see, it took me 30 minutes. It's so easy, so simple. Uh, so it's it's basically my cheapest type of commission. That is like $5 yeah. for a best pony logo. So I'm like, I offered it because people wanted me to draw their OCs. Like, so-and-so is best, uh, uh, this OC is best pony. And at first I didn't want to do it because there is like some sort of animosity towards OCs in this fandom. And I was like, but I don't want to consider one OC better than the other. But then, but then I tried luck. I said, you know what? I'm going to make an OC. Let's see the reaction. And it was pretty neutral. Mm. It was pretty tolerant. People were like, no, yeah, okay, that's fine. And I was like, oh, wow. No riots. No <laughs> setting containers on fire. No reporting me to DeviantArt or anything. That, had ha- that happened in the past, by the way. Oh so I'm like, I'm like, wow, guys... Kudos too, yeah, I guess it's okay and fair game to do best OC logos. So I started doing OC logos and that's what I am right now. Wow, I, I think I might ask you for a commission then because 
um, honestly speaking, the art you do with um, Best Ponies, well, we, uh, fo- we're focusing on Best Ponies right now, and I have to say, it's really awesome. Like, I, I, I can see how it goes. Like, I've, I've been meaning to ask, how did you g- got it the way you want it to look like that? Because um, I've been looking at the logos. I've been, yeah, basically I've been looking at it and I got no idea how you edit the why or I got no idea how you edit it at all. Well, like I said before, I am fairly okay with Photoshop. So the only program that I use to draw is Photoshop. Uh, I used to I used to draw with Photoshop CS1, but then after I got my desktop, I moved onto Photoshop CS5 and CS2. Oh, I uh, escalated s- quickly. <laughs> uh, no, I, I did this for a reason. I use Photoshop CS5 when I am not streaming, but when I'm streaming, I use Photoshop CS2 because uh, CS5 is way too powerful and it makes the stream lag like crazy. So I am like, I need something practical and something simple to use. I'm going to go for Photoshop CS CS2. So, um, but it's exactly the same thing. I use layers and I use vectors to make the different parts of the of the logo. Uh, the first one that I vector was, of course, the the best pony rarities best pony uh, logo that took me like two hours to vector all the details and everything. But I left the the vector lines open and available for me to fill with color, so I can easily change the mm. color of the of the logo. And just put it to, into a different color scheme to, for a different character. Uh, mm. That's it is simpler than it looks. That's why it's it takes me so little to just work on it. The biggest thought process comes to uh, what colors do I use? Like for example, with Rainbow Dash, what do I, what color do I use for the letters? Do I go, go for a rainbow scheme? Use or all do the I colors. Use, uh, yeah, I use all the colors. Or uh, do I use the cyan and the and the blue of her body? The, the most difficult one was this. What kind of color <laughs> is each letter going to be? Oh, I, I see Discord. Yeah, Discord plays by his own rules. <laughs> Discord, Discord was a lot of fun, and it was less nightmarish than I first thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be there for like an, a day or so, but it only took me one hour. I was like, oh wow, I can't believe I figured that. I figured this out so quickly. Well, you were having fun. But um, James, I, uh, I'm I'm looking through your uh, different art and stuff. So you do um, currently commissions are open. So people who wants to have art by James, you can go ask him how. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, since... they are open forever. By the way, I'm not closing. <laughs> oh. Yay. Okay, cool. I, I might ask one. But no, um, I'm I'm looking at your art here, and it's different from what others have been trying to do. And I think what I'm noticing here is that most of your lines, instead of using how the show does it or how other people are trying to copy it, you do thick black lines, you use heavy shadows. Basically, it, it's a style of your own, not like what's like in show or... Basically, yeah, it's your you, own style. You, you mean I, I don't go for show accurate style, I try to just go with my own, my own style. Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I am a huge fan of heavy shadows. Uh, uh, that... That wasn't that doesn't come from my furry background actually. I am I was not a huge fan of heavy shadows when I was in the furry fandom. I like things to be clear. I want thing wanted things to be like uh oh yeah, this is what's going on in this picture. It's very clear, no no shadows, no anything. The problem with that is that it doesn't give a lot of volume to the picture. It makes it look very two dimensional. Mm-hmm. Adding so many heavy shadows, I am hoping that it gives some some sort of uh depth to it. Some, some sort of three-dimensional feel to it, uh, so I that's that's what I go for with the with the heavy shadows. I am trying to cut down on those. Like um, if you see one of my pictures, the one with uh, Fluttershy being a pirate with Philomena on her shoulder. Yeah, yeah I remember that, that one is very bright and very colorful, and it basically it barely has any shadows at all. But still, uh, it has that style. It has your. It, I have to say, it has your style because it's. I don't know. When I look at this, it's huh? It's James. It's James' picture. It's like you have that style. I don't know. It could also be with the way you draw the ponies, I guess. Uh yeah. It's I. I have a very weird way to draw the ponies. I usually make the snouts very big, and I cannot help that. Um, if you check on the show, they 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 have the muscles and the snouts very low on their heads. 
and they are very narrow and very short. I usually put them all the way, uh, halfway on the head and then very, like, bulgy and very big. Um, I have to admit, I am kind of, like, influenced by artists like Kevin Sano, who does kind of, like, that bulgy uh, nose kind of style. Mm, okay. And and I kind of got influenced by that. Not so much, because he does very big noses. I do, like, kind of, like, middle size to uh, small noses. Oh. No, but um, that, okay. I, I'm, I'm looking at one of your pencil drawings, like, uh, Commission Twilight, uh, Twilight Scribe, uh, Scriber? Was oh, it? yeah, Twilight Scribe. As, uh, she's a scribe of the Brotherhood of Steel in Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, and that, I, I, don't, I won't say almost so accurate, but almost... But it has, still has your style. I, I like it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's, uh, you know, if you, are, uh, if you have established art style, I don't mean to say that I have one because my art style is continuously changing. Um, I, I sometimes find new things to do or how to change things. But if you have an established art style, you can change it into whatever you want. You can, you, you can do it on a canvas, you can do it on a piece of paper, you can do it on a napkin on a bar, you can do it on a, on a digital painting, like the ones that I do. Or, but if you have established art style, you can do it whatever you want. Mm, true, true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Your artwork is really good. <laughs> <laughs> I completely disagree, but that's because every artist is going to tell you, if you tell them that artwork is good, they are going to tell you that it's not. Oh, okay. You want me to tell you down? I, I can do that if you want to. <laughs> no, we are we are our worst critic. Um, uh, because being happy with your with your artwork is a good thing, but you shouldn't do it too much. Uh, narcissistic. Or else you... What? It'll be narcissistic. Yeah, it will be narcissistic. You're like, oh, wow, look at this picture that I made is a dog catching a ball and it's all sticks and circles. I feel so happy and accomplished. I am not going to do anything to get better. Well, at least you're drawing stuff that we understand. Unlike some of these people just take out a paint bucket and drink a cup of Hennessy and go bish, bam, boom, bang, bish, bang, and art. <laughs> oh. You mean they go ja- Jackson Pollock on the canvas? And just, Pretty much that or like they stand next to a light rail train and shh, I feel the wind. No, I well, you know, the wind and use the fingernails and crack. Some crap happens. <laughs> yeah, but that's the beauty of art. I'm pretty sure there's people who look at those pictures and they they get something out of them. I personally, I, I, I can personally see the point of what the artist was going for, but other times I so don't get it. And I feel so lost. And I'm like, I don't get this picture. Oh, God. I'm going to get an artist dead. I'm going to quote a line from this old show. I don't know if you watch it called Little Lulu. Okay. I never heard of it. I, I have, but it's continue. Air here. It's not a picture, but it makes you think you're looking at a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but James, I have to, for me personally, I like it. And I, I see this one picture. I, I've seen it on, I've seen it on a podcast before. And Oh boy. Um, <laughs> fan art, MLP, Sandy, the fire cult. And it's <laughs> Chef Sandy putting up, Fan fires. <laughs> yeah, Chef Sandy, he's the fire pony of the fandom, and he's putting down fires, and Apple Cider is in the background saying, Hey, Chef, you need help! And hey, Chef hey. is like, oh, 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 Fire, fire! <laughs> I don't know, you, Chef I, Sandy. There, there was a fire going on at that point when I drew that. I think it was... Oh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Las Vegas as unicorn. It was something mm. else. Uh, Let's see. Uh, October nineteen, two thousand twelve. What was happening in October? I think it's the Christmas um, um, wedding, pony wedding. Uh yeah, I think it was the pony wedding. Yeah, I think it was the pony wedding, and people were just losing their minds. And Chef was like, "Oh, guys, calm <laughs> down. It's just a show. You should really just relax. Oh God, no, stop setting." Equestrian alien on fire. Oh, Sathisto, please do something. Huh? What? Trixie. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I will do something. Hold on. Oh, I didn't get ready. Uh, what? Trixie? No. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seth. Very mean. I've been very mean to Seth. I, I, I shouldn't. Seth is a cool guy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that was fun to draw. Yeah. I, I I do love the I do love your art because 
Uh, for me, I'm not that good at art, but I try my best, and yeah, it works out sometimes. I'm doing right now. I'm doing podcasting, and I I love doing podcasting. That's what I'm good at. <laughs> No, but that's, uh, that, that's another good advice that we could give to those out there who are trying uh, new things. Um, don't be afraid. Uh, it's a, you know, it, it, don't be afraid of it, but after you have tried it for a while, have a moment to think about it and then figure out what you do best. Uh, for example, you could be good at doing podcasts, you could be good at do- doing fanfics, you could be good at doing voice acting or animation, but... If you find something you are good at, uh, focus on that and leave all the... I don't say forget about the other things, but leave that aside and, and focus on the thing that you are really good at. Like, for example, I'm good at doing artwork, but on the on the side, I am also writing articles and uh, editorials on my blogger account. Mm. So I, I do those things. The same way that are uh, writers and fanfic authors who are writing on their fanfics and they're working really hard on getting their fanfics edited so they are they, they, they read good and they read well but they are also doing the, the, the concept art of their fanfic but they do that on their free time so that, that kind of thing don't try to do everything don't try to do animation videos uh, artwork fanfics because then if you try doing everything at the same time you end up doing nothing well except if you're Black Griffin <laughs> <laughs> Except if you're Black Black, Black Griffin, yeah, Black Griffin does everything, and my God, the guy is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that man cannot do? He sings, he draws, yes. he animates. There's one thing he's yet to do is to see the both of us in the same room because he's met Norman, he's met me, but we haven't been in the same room together. <laughs> Indeed. No, but honestly speaking, um, whatever you say just now, it, it, it's true. But sometimes, if you if you have the talent to do other things. Do it. Who, who knows? It might be your yeah, no, thing. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying you have to not try doing it. I'm just saying you have to measure yourself. You don't want to spread yourself too thin. Mm, true, true. I understand. I understand. But if um, I I know where you're coming from, and there's some cases like Black Griffin is the the exception. But if you can do what he do, do it. I guess. For example, um, Decibel Pony. He writes music, and at the same time, he also draws his own cover art. So, oh, my favorite one so far is still BM Double Bass, who's a musician and also a software engineer who's been working on creating a pony operating system. It's a bit on hiatus, but he's still doing it. Yeah, true. I mean, oh, like that thing's still going. <laughs> the Pony OS, yeah. Twilix, Twilix died, but Pony Pony OS, I think, is still going. Oh, wow, that's cool. I heard of that a few weeks ago, and I was so sad when I heard that it kind of like shut down, but to, to hear that it's still going makes me happy. Uh, actually, that's I haven't awesome. checked on it recently, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crossing fingers that it's still, it's still a thing. Yeah, but honestly speaking, you can have multiple talents, but do what you... You only can have one cutie bar, let's put it this way. Yeah, true. But the, unless the thing you is... are Apple Bloom and you have the cutie box in the yeah. case. No, unless you're Black Griffin, he has cutie box. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Black Griffin has the best case of cutie pox. No, but honestly speaking, guys, it's do what you enjoy. If you enjoy doing it, then it's worth going into it. Time to quit school. <laughs> no, don't do that. You need an education too. Okay, um, Dan, you have any questions? Yes, actually, I do, and it's concerning your Ask Tumblr, Ask Movie Slate. Oh yes, I almost forgot about Movie Slate. <laughs> Thank you yeah, for bringing her up. Slate is an amazing pony and. I tell you one thing, I love that main. <laughs> that is the most creative OC main I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you, because it's hell to draw it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, every time I draw that main, it takes me one hour. <laughs> Just the hair alone. Well, that is one hour of work. It is beautiful. It is a really, really good main. It's, uh, uh, when I was coming up with the concept, I was like, oh my god, I love this. I hate myself. <laughs> what did I get myself into? Oh, it's paying off. We love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hear a lot of people com- uh, complain about that when they uh, they come up with fan art. Th- that's the <laughs> other thing. I have people drawing fan art of movies late and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. It was completely unintentional. I'm so sorry. But they come at me saying, I had a lot of fun drawing this, but I'm not drawing it anymore. And I'm like, I, 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 that's okay. That's perfectly fine. You know what? I'll do it. I'll I'll give up too. But hey, 
uh, somebody has to keep throwing movies date, right? And they're like, yeah, right. So, yeah. Thank you for the fan art. Even though it's going to be the last one, I'm going to see. Oh, no problem. And they walk out the door. They drop the microphone. Get off the stage. Uh, what was the... But, <laughs> Sorry, uh, what was the idea behind the main? Because I've seen a lot of mains from um, cool rainbow colored mains to ahem, ahem. yeah to licorice like like main. So, how did you get the idea for film reels? Well, um, I was I, I was trying to come up with a good idea for an ass tumbler pony, uh, and I was like, I need something that hasn't been done before. And I think I was thinking on the Nostalgia Critic at that point. And I am like, well, I love movies. Like, movies are my, my favorite thing next to My Little Pony, Pokemon, and Mass Effect. <laughs> uh, so I was like, I, I should do something with movies in it. But what kind of movies? And how do I justify that? And I'm like, maybe there is a pony who runs a cinema in Ponyville. But that's kind of boring. How do I, how do I make it more interesting? Oh, I get it. And then I was like, I'm going to put celluloid mane on her head. And then I was like, th- 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 then I had the conscious uh, little goblins telling, but how are you going to justify her having celluloid mane? What ma- what sense does it make? And I'm like, it's a fantasy world. Don't, don't make ask why, ask why not. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Don't ask why, ask why not. So I was like, yeah, let, let's go with that. And that's how I came up with that. It was like literal moment of sudden inspiration. Okay, so, so. I was like... I had a I had a little devil on my on my shoulder saying maybe you should draw a pony that has celluloid mane and I was like man yeah maybe I should mm. so I went and did it. Guys, go to his Us Movie Slit Tumblr blog because it's awesome. I'm at a I'm at a page here where uh, I think Movie Slit is watching or I'm not sure watching or reviewing Birdemic. <laughs> oh my oh. god, is that Us pun? I know, it's... You've collaborated with Ask Pun, oh my gosh! Yeah, I know the guy who does Ask Pun. He's a, he's a cool that. dude. I love Ask mm. Pun. Oh. I am I'm also good friends with the guy who does uh, Ask Little Miss Rarity too. Oh. Uh, Little Miss Rarity has had a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, cameos in Movies Late, by the way. Oh, I, I haven't seen her yet. But How about, do you know the guy who runs uh, Ask Internet Explorer? Uh, no, sadly I don't. Uh, I know the guy who runs uh, Ask Stories from the Front. Oh, Stories from the Front. Yeah, I heard of that one. Yeah, I, I know the guy who, who does that blog. He's a cool guy as well. Um, God, it makes me kind of sound like a, like a Tumblr pun snob. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, just awesome. You, go take a look. It's really worth it. <laughs> Thank you. You guys, uh, you guys are more than welcome. And by the way, of course, send questions to movies late. She's always needed to ca- to have new more movies. So um, about the question, how does it work? Like, um, I, I, I'm a bit new with movie slate here, but so what do people generally ask? Um, it's very simple. They uh, the, the whole concept, the way movie slate started, is that she only had one movie in her theater. And that was moving the water to Cloudsdale. <laughs> if you remember in Hurricane Fluttershy, yeah. Spike is playing the movie and then it burns. Uh-huh. So that was oh, the last yeah. movie that movie State had. <laughs> now she's kind of in a bit of a pickle where she's like, but my movies, they are all burned out. I need new movies. Please, somebody help me. So she opens up the Ask uh, box to have people send her movies to review. So Ooh, she reviews yeah. movies at the same time she gets new movies for her cinema. That is interesting. Uh, that, that is a very, interesting. very good way to put it. It's a, it's a super simple concept for NAS blog, and it's going to keep itself like that. Um, I am going to have some sort of very short storyline going, where I'm going to explain the origin of her main and why is it like that. Ooh. That is going to happen sooner than than you than you imagine. I already have like half of it drawn, and it's just sitting on my uh, on my hard drive. Ooh. ooh. Uh, but it's going to be very straightforward and simple. It's just an ask blog, and it's going to be like that. One picture per update, except for the special updates. And one question, one movie per update. That's that's how it goes. And still then, I have like 92 questions, 92 movies. <laughs> wow. Um, no, not counting intermissions and fan art uh, reblogs from other uh, artists. I have drawn 92 updates for Movies Late. 
Wow, that is a lot. And I had fun with every single one of them. Wow. Because I... it's what I love. That's that's simple. That, that's the that's the other thing when it comes to be uh, when when it comes to be an artist and trying things. Do what you like to do. Don't do what is popular. True, true. Because if yeah, I think I remember Dusty saying this. If you do what's popular, or you if you do something to get popular, you burn out really quick. Yeah, yeah. and you're doing it wrong. You're like. If you do something just for the sake of being popular or uh, just getting the money, you are doing it for the wrong reasons. You have to do it because you want to share it with someone. Actually, there's, there's, a, there's another analogy to that that I've noticed is that if you do something for popularity, you're creating this short-term goal for yourself. So maybe perhaps if you don't achieve it, well, sometimes people get really beat up. But those who achieve it, sometimes they're unpopular. Yay, now what? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> No, and it's back to you know. Let me find another hobby. Why don't I try? Yeah, yeah. like Cutie Mark Crusader level. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like if you keep trying all these things, you of course you will eventually find something you're good at. But are you really fulfilled with what you have found? Maybe not. You have no, I hate with those moments. You're happy with. Yeah, but you know, I hate these moments when you find something you're good at, but it's not something you like. <laughs> mm. I can relate to that. Oh I think I kind of relate to that with that as well. I cannot think of anything right now, but I'm pretty sure I have something there. That oh, is something exactly you really like, like to do, but you can't do for nuts. Oh, God, I have a perfect example for that. <laughs> yeah. All of my life, all of my life, I've always wanted to be a costume designer for movies and television. Like, I, I, I love costumes, and I love I, I love dresses, and I love to design. Kind of like rarity. Work I for wanted... DHX. What? Work for DHX. But no, the, here's the thing. I suck at it. I suck. <laughs> I you am terrible. If you can like that, you can work for DHX. No, well, well, I, I can always try. I always wanted to, like, send my uh, 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 job application because I don't only draw pony, I draw other stuff. Um, so I always wanted to, th- to throw my job application at them. I wonder if they are open, though. Go I for it. I mean, they just... are. Uh, I don't remember because a while back they had this kind of... Um, job application thing they're looking for people but I think they're looking for freelance not if hiring not, just, ask, just ask them if they have an internship it's worth it mm, true but you have to move to Canada I don't mind I love Canada dude if DHX gives you an internship it is not a question whether you can when move to Canada it's when your flight leaves <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah I, oh god I love that attitude yes that's exactly it that's the other thing Keep yourself motivated and happy about it. Like, uh, th- there's going to be times when you're going to think this isn't worth it. You sh- why are you keep doing this? You need to learn how to silence that voice that tells you uh, those things and just keep moving forward. Yep. Uh, awesome. Uh, don't, don't silence it completely because sometimes that voice is going to be right. But <laughs> be able to, you have to be able to pick the correct words that it's saying. True, 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 true. If, if what I'm saying makes any sense. <laughs> I, I think it is. I think it is. <laughs> good, good, good. I don't want to confuse people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hate doing that. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, Dan, you got anything more? Uh, well, actually, I was just full of praise for uh, Ask Movie Slate. But, of course, um, you know, there's the usual deal asking where the inspiration came from. And you kind of explained that to us. But is Movie Slate your pony Sona and by any chance? Or do you just keep, um, keep her as an OC? Um, there are a lot of things that I, uh, like, uh, for example, movie opinion-wise, uh, many of the opinions that Movies Late says uh, are shared with me. Like, for example, she loves, her favorite movie of all time is, is uh, Aliens. Uh, it's also my favorite movie of all time. So, there is that. Um, but when it comes to opinion of other movies, like, for example, I don't like Citizen Kane, but she loves it. <laughs> Uh, she finds 2001 A Space Odyssey kind of difficult to, go, to follow. I despise that movie. Um, uh, she she hates Birdemic, but I kind of enjoy it. Uh, that, that, that kind of thing. That's that's how it's balanced. But oh, when it okay. comes to personality, she is definitely an OC. Uh, I mean, she's female. She's a unicorn. She has celluloid mane. I definitely don't look like that at all. <laughs> I, I don't have a I don't have a pony sona yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I didn't consider drawing myself a pony sauna because I don't think it's uh, 
I don't think it makes sense. When I was in the in the furry fandom, I didn't have a fursona. I had a character called James Cork, and that's that's how I came up with the username, just James Cork. But he wasn't me. He didn't represent me. Every time I drew myself, I drew myself as a human. Mm, ah, okay. which, I think that's why people didn't like me very much in the furry fandom because I didn't have a fursona, and I I kind of like found the concept of a fursona kind of like egotistical and egocentrical. Yeah, I, I it's, it's for me. Isn't that what people become furries for? Is like this escape where you can't be who you want to be. And some people uh, just want to be ego- egoistic. Well, but that's that's with furries. That's with any other media. I mean, there's people who become furries. There's people who who become Pokemon. There's people who become part of the Starship Enterprise mm. or part of the Star Wars. Uh, Which is why I am Alicorn fr- franchise. What? <laughs> Which is why, if you noticed, I'm an Alicorn. Yeah, and by the way, I am hating the guts out of your hair. <laughs> uh, if you don't know, I am making a uh, drawing for you guys. I'm so Aww, thank you so oh, much. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> you guys, are, uh, your OCs are interviewing Movies Late. Uh, awesome. I'm sorry, sorry for making this so Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, I, the, the, uh, thing, the thing with me is right now, um, the way I look at OCs or um, basically any character, for, for me... Norman Sanzo as in me in any world is my avatar. In let's say Pony World, what you see, he is my avatar. He is my character. And as for let's just say the Kim Possible fandom, that is my avatar. Same person looks different. Same personality as me. That's about it. Hmm. It's because you can draw. <laughs> that and <laughs> <Kidding>. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, I'm serious because it's like you can draw, you can put yourself in different mediums. I've been Saint Pinky, and even though my real face also people, some people call me Saint Pinky in real life. Yeah, but but the, the thing is, like for me, the way the, the logic thing, sorry, um, how it works in my mind is, I am me in real world. This is my world. What happened if I go to that other world? How would I look like in that world? So, where do you keep your mirror? I don't know. So it's basically the it, it's the Kingdom Hearts principle of yeah. changing whenever you go to another world, like how uh, how Sora becomes a lion when he goes to the Lion King world, but then he becomes like a skeleton when he goes to Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm. But then he becomes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I I haven't thought about it that way, but it sounds similar to what I was thinking. If you think about it, how can such person have an OC? It's like. Oh, OC. Isn't OC something, like, really personal and important? No, I mean, I think that's for a pony, so now. Uh, an OC, you can have a hundred OCs. If you mm. want to write your own fanfic, you can have a trillion uh, OCs. I so. know, but it's like... For me, it's like having an OC with carrying your name. I mean, that's that's basically a pony sona area, I would guess. You put it in that dimension because you, you're basically putting yourself into the body of a pony. If it's an OC, it's... Nothing is like template, name, cutie mark, occupation, type, it's end of story. Yeah, it could but be. like the one that I just sent over, that is my pony sona. That's how I would put myself, that's how I imagine myself as a pony. Bad then, bad then. I'm not an artist. I know, no, you but. You guys are bullies! <laughs> uh, the thing... Oh, shut up! Let's keep hitting him with brushes! <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly speaking, the, th- the thing is, for me, an OC is uh, really important. It's like. Just one OC, like how you want to represent yourself. Because you can have multiple OCs, multiple things, like whatever you want to create. Yes, that is true. But have one that's representing you. That's the thing I, I, that I like to say. Like, have one that represents you. And for me, it's Norman Sanzo, the pony Norman Sanzo, that character from that one show. And if I were to, let's just say I am a fan, a big fan of Attack on Titans, I'll probably draw one character that can work with that world. I mean, that's just how I think and operate. But that's just me. I I completely see your point of view. And mm. you... We, maybe we should... Should we bring up all the rules about making an OC? Mm. I think it's pretty understood. It's... Yeah, that's first of all, do not put that. celluloid mane on their head. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you could, You're going to hate it. Too. You can't put rules on me because I believe rules are made to be broken. So that's why yeah, you have me. Well, but if you believe that rules are meant to be broken, wouldn't that mean that you're breaking your own rule? Hmm? Like, rules are meant to be broken, so you break I the rules by... I did say that was a rule. Well, if, 
you, you can make that a rule and you can break it by following the rules. <laughs> yeah, so uh, aren't you following? As I said, I didn't make that a rule. That's my principle. That's my motto. If you want to put it that way. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Then. So anyway, I um, do have one. I do have one thing to say about OCs, though. It doesn't matter what you do with them design wise. When it comes to it, it's all about the story. Mm, there true. was a fun thing on Equestria Daily uh, that. I was so happy it made the cut because I love the concept. It's called Lord Commander Hurricane Fire <laughs> of the Tartarus Hell something something finds his destiny as a flower shop owner. Uh, that sounds like you don't so, mess with the Zohan. It's, it's, it's kind of like that because the character is like six Pegasi wings, six <laughs> bat wings, dark, f- uh, black, body and hair and like fire red mane and like snake eyes and it has spikes all over and he sells flowers in Ponyville <laughs> that's uh, that's exactly the same as ponifying the Zohan no, but like I, I, he was Palestinian terrorist and he wants to sell shoes <laughs> which it's actually based on a real story really? you didn't know that the, that the Zohan don't mess with the Zohan is based on a real story no, I didn't. I love that movie. It is based on a real story. Oh ben my Stiller, gosh! Ben Stiller met up with the original uh, character, the, the 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 one that the Sohan is based on, to research for the role. Oh my gosh! Wow! You know, right? The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Uh, has Film Slate uh, reviewed Don't Mess with the Sohan yet? Uh, no, she hasn't reviewed that movie yet. All right. That's- that's, that's because I haven't watched it. That's the that's one important rule about the Tumblr. If I haven't, if I haven't watched the movie, I don't review it. Oh, well, oh, talking about reviews, I do notice here that you have another site where you review other things, and that site is called uh, AWTHRE. Uh, it's too long. I'll put it in the show notes. And basically, in this blog, you review pony stuff. Yeah, that's uh, my at the ATVI uh, uh, blog, which basically ATVI stands for Awful Threat Destruction Imminent, which is kind of a silly, stupid title, and I should change it because I'm not happy with it. Uh, uh, that came up as a series... That title comes from a series of Lion King fanfics that I did that I never released. Um, and I said, I need something original to come up with for my... For my for my blog, what do I use? Well, I'm gonna use this because I never got any use out of this title, so I just throw it away. I just use it as a as a title for it. And yeah, I review pony stuff. When uh, when season three was being aired on the hub, I was reviewing pony episodes basically the same weekend that they got released. Oh, uh, and it kind of become kind of popular because people people sort of take my opinion into account, which surprises me. Oh. Nobody ever took my opinion into account about anything on the internet. And I have, like, uh, a small group of people saying, oh, please, oh, please, review this, review that. Please review Snowdrop. People want me to review Snowdrop. Wow. Uh, but that's because I reviewed Double Rainbow. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I noticed you because you reviewed Double Rainbow, man. Um, I, 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 would, I, I think I need to take time and read it from start to finish. And I, I have to say, it looks interesting. Like, um... I think we had a guy who reviews Pony or analyzes Pony. Yeah, it was... Yeah, Cy... What, no, 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 Cy... What was his name again? <laughs> oh, we're... Was it, was it Digibrony? Yes, Digibrony. Yeah, Digibrony. Thank Cyber you. I love what that guy! Yeah. I love Digibrony. I am a fanboy of that guy. He's so good. He's pretty awesome. But the thing is, like, um, his style of... He, he analyzes videos and I he reviews it to a T. Like... He reviews it to a T where it makes all the flaws more clearer and stuff. And looking here, you just give it, like, honest opinions, I think. Well, it's that uh, I always defended the fact that Pony is simple and that over-reading on it, it's kind of, like, stupid. Uh, But it's stupid when you're trying to prove your head canon or when you're trying to, like... Do it seriously. Like, for example, it's like, oh, in this scene, you can clearly see that 
uh, Rarity and Twilight are touching hoofs. That means they have a relationship and they are so close to each other. They love them and they love each other and they're going to have so many beautiful children. And I'm like, oh, please stop. Shut up. Shut up. Don't go any further. However, what Didi Brony does is really smart and very interesting because he's like um, covering all the reasons why the show is like it is. Like uh, the message they're trying to get across, the, uh, the references they're trying to make uh, to books, movies, TV shows, comics, whatever, how the story flows, how the character development is portrayed and all that. So, in the case of Digibron is over analysis, it's not only very entertaining, but it's also welcome and kind of like eye-opening. Uh, however, I don't go that far. I just go for the for what you see on the screen. Uh-huh. And I just give you my opinion of what I think. Mm, so you don't go in depth like, oh, in this episode, Spike was not himself because blah, 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 blah. I, that's not really, I, that's analysis. That's analysis. Uh, however, I did go into kind of detail when uh, you're talking about Spike at your service, right? Yep. The, that one, I got no idea why because Spike to me, he's smarter than that. I didn't go as far as just saying and you did it, yeah. Spike. Sorry. It's like, yeah, in that, in that episode, it was very simple, my point about Spike being out of character. I will always defend that episode for being a terrible Spike episode, but an awesome Applejack episode. True, true. Uh, the problem with Spike at your service is that in the very first episode of season three, they show Spike as being the most useful and badass psychic that the, the show has ever had. Because he, with the help of Princess Cadence, they saved the Crystal Empire. And I'm like, yes, the sidekick is the is the hero. He gets a he gets a paint glass on the Canterlot uh, castle, showing that he saved the Crystal Empire. That's so cool. What do they do with him in episode ten? They have him mess everything up after three seasons of Spike <laughs> being completely uh, useful and capable of helping at the house. No, the, and three the, episodes later, they have Spike baking a cake, not making a mess out of it. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is that like I was like you were saying, Spike was out of character. Like I can understand Spike wanting to pay his debt, like his dragon coat or something like that. Like maybe he was going through a phase. But the thing is, like we all know that Spike can basically cook or something like that. I mean, like he he's capable. I think yeah, he can cook because in the episode Owlicious. He made cookies. He baked cookies. So, yeah, he, in the in the old world, that ends world episode, he make uh, vanilla, vanilla cookies. And in, I think it was in 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 uh, what was the episode? Uh, I think it was Return of Harmony. He was cleaning the the library, and he did a good job with it. Um, I heard someone argue that Spike was doing a terrible job at cleaning the farm because that was farm job, yeah. which is different from doing library job library work, but Correct. he wasn't doing anything different. He was just making pipes and cleaning a pig. And actually, he did a very good job at cleaning the pig. <laughs> it, I mean, so, I think it's just saying that uh, coming back to what we were talking about earlier, maybe when you try to do everything, you'd end up doing nothing at all. Don't, don't. Or you think, I can do this. I make myself useful. No, that is exactly what happened to Sweetie Belle. No, the, the thing is, the thing is, there are some subset things that you can do. It's like, you can drive. Okay, you can drive an automatic car. So meaning, if you ride in any automatic car, you can drive that car. How you do it, that's besides the question. But the thing is, we know Spike can bake. We know Spike can clean. Basically, he's good around the house. The thing is, in that episode, Spike was way out of character. And he's not that dumb. Usually, he's the one that's calm and collective. Yeah, he, he is the re- the blue oni for uh, Twilight's red oni. Um, yeah, he, what he is, is the that more, supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that means that uh, red oni is the character that is kind of out of out of control, always worrying, always going left and right, no th- not thinking. And uh, the blue oni is the calm and collected character who is always the moral center. Is like no, let's think about this, let's be careful. In this case. Uh, let's put you an example. Rainbow Dash is the red Oni, and Applejack is the blue Oni. However, Rarity is the blue Oni, 
and Applejack is the red oni. You know what I mean? I think I need more sleep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't get it at all. Uh, no, it's okay. It means that it's one char- the, the, uh, two characters that compensate each other. One is calm and collected. The other is nervous and insecure. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, you needed to be boiled down that far. Sorry, but yeah, it's, it's all right. right. All right. When it's it comes fault. to overanalyze the show on my on my blog, I don't go any further than that. Okay. I I don't try to to analyze this the aspect of the characters or the look of the characters. I'm like, oh, I like this character. It looks cool. Or oh, I don't like the design of this character. The colors don't match at all. Uh-huh. Or I I also try to keep it very simple. I don't want to spend three hours writing an article <laughs> just to talk about how it doesn't make any sense that Sweet Apple Lakers is going to be in danger during winter when they are the only ones who own the Sub Apple Jam production. Yeah, I, I think the, what? I think that's uh, has been done by other people like DJ Brony, um, Brony analysts, and no, they they that's their job. Your job is just to review it face value. Yeah, that's their talent. Their talent is to make uh, analysis videos, and they are so good and so well done. I you two should I start a them. podcast. What? You two should start a podcast. You and DJ Brony. I'd love to have a podcast with Digi Brony. The guy is so co- when he talks, he's so cool. But I am so intimidated because the guy is kind of like this. He's so big right now. I'm like, oh wow, Digi Brony. He he made a comment in one of my articles, and I was freaking out. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> one of my articles. Oh my god, what do we do? But yeah, um, <laughs> I, I I admire the guy. If if someone got the got the uh, the gist of reviewing Pony episodes. That's that's definitely him. Him and Paleo, by the way. Mm. Ah, yes, Paleo. Paleo is a good a good guy as well. He's uh, he does a pretty good job at, at reviewing. Too bad that he's kind of busy with uh, Saber Spark doing the Brony Chronicles documentary. Yep. True, true. But he's not making talent to review right now, anyway. But <laughs> yeah, well, no, he the last episode he reviewed was Magical Mystery Cure, and he had. Uh, every single episode before that one until the Discord episode left to be reviewed. So I'm here hoping that he he continues reviewing them. But his talent is being put to better use. So uh, to to good use right now. So I I uh, by the way that Brony documentary uh, thing that they are doing together, awesome stuff. I'm I'm loving it so far. Yep, I I, I I've seen it and wow, it's good. It's better than the actual documentary that John Delancey produced. The thing about that is, like, okay, um, I've seen both of them, and there you have to take it from two different aspects because the John Delancey produced uh, documentary is not meant for us. Yeah, it's meant for the people who are supposed to understand us. Yeah, and the Brony documentary that um, Saber Spark and Pelio are doing. It's kind of open for everyone, but at the same time, it's um, targeting us because, like, we all know what's going on in the fandom. But here's a history of what had happened before us. Yeah, and that you know, you learn so from. much. Yeah, you learn so much from these kind of documentaries. I don't know why it's this this feeling I get, especially when I just get to the TV one day. I mean, I, I seldom watch TV because there's so much crap on it. But when I just tune into National Geographic and I find something nice, next thing you know, it's six a.m. and I'm still in front of the TV. Yeah, we. So, like, had you, when you learn something from watching these things, it's just it's a great feeling. If only I had National Geographic, I'll be watching it. 24-7. No, hell, I will put the History Channel and just watch the Aliens guy over and over again. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's insane. Ancient Aliens, oh gosh, that show. <laughs> aliens. But oh, then, God. you got any more questions? Ah, uh, no, I'm done. Okay, 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 then. Your ATDI Tumblr, any difference? Um... Uh, the Addy Tumblr is more so because it's kind of like a substitute for my For Affinity uh, website. Um, oh. When I left For Affinity, I was left without uh, without a source for me to. Okay, I- I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I am the kind of people. I am the kind of person who enjoys both the clean artwork and the Rule Thirty Four. Ah. Not gonna lie. And when I go to DeviantArt, the artwork that is there is. Very badly filtered, and none of it is 
that good. However, in Tumblr, I can follow those artists that I admire, that I love. And I can, like, I can reblog whatever I want. Uh, my, my, my blog is labeled not safe for work, mostly because I can post, uh, I, I can reblog whatever I want there, uh, both clean and not clean. So, fair warning, if you're going to follow me there, you have to watch it. I reblog everything. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you say reblog and yet it's blogger. <laughs> No, I mean no. It's uh, it's uh, the ADVI on Tumblr. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah on ADVI Tumblr. on Tumblr that is reblog or blogger that is win. <laughs> <laughs> that is impossible to do. It's impossible always possible. It's just tedious. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Copy paste. Take this here. Take this there. Oh god, no! Please give me a break. Yeah, I don't uh, want to do that. yeah. Um, but yeah, my 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 concept for my blog on Tumblr is to do that and also to share my. My DeviantArt, my, my deviations, my the, uh, the pictures that I post on DeviantArt, because I am like hit share button on Tumblr, post it, go done. Mm, and also because it's uh, because at first I had no idea what I was doing or what I was going with movie slate, so I just had a I was I was looking at this all at all these other artists. Actually, this is a much better answer than uh, the one talking the one of me talking about Rule Thirty Four. But <laughs> you can use both of them. Uh, these artists, they usually have two blogs, two different Tumblr accounts. They have one for the Tumblr Pony account, and they have one for the Mod account, okay? Uh. Ah. So what I did was I make the main account the Mod account, and Movie Slate is a secondary blog of my main blog. Ah, smart. Because... Yeah, because in Tumblr you can have like I don't know, like up to ten blogs. Ooh. So I have one for movies late and one for my mod stuff. I mean, if somebody, if somebody other than you told me that, because I know what you, you know what you're doing. If somebody else told me that, it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> you created that blog first, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's like, uh, no, I created them both at the same time, actually, <laughs> so, because one came right after the other. Uh, um, so. Yeah, that, that that's that's the point of my uh, of my Tumblr blog. Ah, uh, no, 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 I get it. Now I get it. So, Ask Movie Slate is the OC, the character's blog. That's her yes. thing. And Ask Movie Slate mod blog is you, right? Yes, that is mine. I mean, so, the Ask Movie Slate mod blog that is uh, ATDI on Tumblr. That's why it has a giant giant red letters. Uh, not safe for work, NSFW. Mm. That means not safe for work, or if you want, not safe for Wuna. <laughs> and <laughs> if I remember right, uh, John Jaseko did the same thing, right? Uh, JJ? Uh, w- wait, what do you mean with that? Because I remember JJ has his um, Us Princess Molestia's blog and Gamer mm-hmm. Luna, and he has his own thing where he posts, well, basically whatever he wants to post video games. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but he did the opposite thing. Uh, uh, Princess Molestia is his main Tumblr. Oh, really? And his mod blog is a secondary one. Oh. Ah. Uh, you know you know that because when you go to Princess Molestia, you see all the people that she follows. Yeah. That's because the people that you follow, you can only see them with your mod blog, with your main blog. Oh, oh. no wonder. Yeah. That's, that's why when you, know? you go to when you go to Movies Late, you don't see anyone... Uh, anyone that movie slate is following because she can't follow anyone because she's a secondary blog. Oh, that I did not know that. Huh. Oh, okay. Norman, by any chance, do you tumble? No, I don't. Okay, no wonder. Yeah, I, I, I don't. So mm, that, that that is interesting. Oh, okay. Why do, do I sound like a noob? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just I was wondering why you never knew. I thought you had a tumbler. No, I don't. A little bit. <laughs> you sound a little bit like a noob. Uh. <laughs> You know, you know what they say about professionals. They are noobs that never quit. <laughs> 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 That's what we stay amateur. <laughs> See, Norman, you just call me not pro at the beginning of this podcast. It made sense. Yeah, but that's because of the loud crackling um, sound in your voice. That was Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> you are not, you are not professional when doing pony podcasts. What kind of pony podcast, professional podcaster are you? <laughs> Dude, if that was a paying job, I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> okay. I, I think we ran too long and kind of bothering James here. <laughs> people, are, people are leaving. They are checking their watches. They're going, oh, God, is this still going? Ah, 
I have watched Titanic for the fourth time while this was playing. Oh, no, 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 you, you, you guys at home, sit down because you need the questions. No, 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 feel free to get up, just sync your iPod and keep moving. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're available on iTunes, there's a reason for that. Yeah, anyway. Are you available on the Google Store? Google Store doesn't have podcasts just yet. Yes, it does. Wait, what? <laughs> what did you say? It doesn't. Google I Store don't. Doesn't I, every podcast? Every wait, time wait, wait, I connect, wait. every time I connect my Android to the to the Kies uh, program on my laptop, it okay. downloads all the new Bronyville uh, episodes. Okay, wait, because there's Kies. Kies is the Samsung. It's not yeah, exactly. Episodes. Get on it, then. Get on it. There's a Kies podcast. Yes, Kies has podcasts. <laughs> oh, this is that Kies cast. Ah, oh, okay, this is interesting. I never heard of this. Now, now I know. Now it's not, we're gonna. Oh, and now it is half the battle. MLP. Yay. <laughs> now, I mean, I was, I've been waiting. For, I'm trying to, still waiting for Google to start a podcast service. They have. They did it once with Google Listen and then they shut it down because uh. nobody used it except for me. <laughs> so, yeah, I always get to these kind of situations. So, anyway. Uh, so, I could give a flying hoot when they shut down Reader. <laughs> so, anyway, let, let, let's. Um, I, I think it's time to end the interview section. So, and now we proceeded to Daniel's rant. <laughs> No, no. So anyway, um, thanks, James, for coming on and talking to us for this long. No problem. I'm going to go back to the closet now. I know no, I have no, to no. get in there. When, when you have just unlocked an achievement, so go out and show it off. <laughs> no, no, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So um, for oh. any for anyone that, that's at home or wondering, where can they look for you online and ask for commissions? Uh, you can go to my DeviantArt. That is uh, James Cork. Uh, J-A-M-E-S-C-O-R-C-K at uh, dot deviantart dot com. Uh, you can go to my Tumblr. Uh, it, that is linked also on my deviantart. Uh, and you can go to my uh, my other Tumblr, askmovieslate dot tumblr dot com, <laughs> which uh, you can either donate uh, money that adds to the request stream uh, time, which is also a good way for you to get kind of like free artwork. That also helps, and I think those are all the websites you can find me. Uh, mm-hmm. That I am active, and that you can get in touch with me easily. Okay, I'll I'll link it in the show notes. Oh Thank my you. god, TS Cast has compatibility with Blubbery. This is amazing. <laughs> oh my! You're ben. having way too much fun with that. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start geeking out very soon. We better end this. Then, <laughs> then oh. we need, we have the show to do first. We have to do. I know, I know. So, well, I'm putting the show on this show work, so show involved. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that so. is relevant. <laughs> anyway. I hope I helped out. I hope Thank I you very much, you did, Definitely, uh, James. I think you. I, I think you make Dan really happy. <laughs> Neat. That is cool. Uh, anyway, um. I'll link all your links in the show notes and make sure people go to your sites. And maybe I'll thanks a lot. For, uh, thanks a lot for the signal boosting, guys. For for sharing that, you you have no idea how much that ha- that helps. Really, no it, problem. it does. Thank you very much for being here as well. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, I'll Hello. I'll have Hello. to Hello. ask for a commission from you later on because I I love what you do with the best pony thing. Oh, cool. Uh, well. I'm open, so feel free, man. Yeah, um, after the show, after the show. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, um, that was guest time. Uh, we had James Cork. He's awesome. If you want to ask art from him, his commissions are open. Um, the lowest is five bucks for one of those best pony things. And what was your highest? Because I saw your highest can go up to... Um, I don't really remember. Uh, 300? Uh, the highest, uh, no, the, no, the highest uh, kind of commission tag that I have is comic books. Mm. Uh, and that has a media of, well, depends on how many pages you want. It's like between 25 to $30 pay, uh, dollars per page. So if you want 10 pages, that's going to get to $300. Ah. So mm. you, you really have to, you really have to be careful with that. Oh, okay. However, uh, my pre- my prices, I think they are more than reasonable. I don't go. I I charge in US dollars because my main audience is uh, American. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, so anytime I get money, I I lose money because <laughs> ten dollars is like seven euros. 
Yeah, oh, 50. right, that's true. Yeah, seven, uh, $15 is like 12 <laughs> I really don't like, like the like euro. euro. Yeah, nor do I. I want to have a common coin to the entire, to the entire world, yeah. but... Uh, Wait for it, Bitcoin is coming. <laughs> I wish! That would be cool, though. <laughs> yeah, it will. Oh, money inflation. No, but seriously, um, I'm, I'm okay, I, I'm looking at your list here. Coin profile. And traditional commissions go to 10 bucks for sketch, and the highest it can go for color and background is 25 bucks. I think it's worth it, because your work here is really awesome. Oh my god, you keep saying that it's awesome, okay. but I am like, oh! Uh, okay, if you want me to tear you down, I can tear you down. <laughs> I am I am curling into a ball, and the ball is getting like tighter and tighter, and I don't, I don't know, I cannot curl any further. I am just, oh god, I am going to crawl into a hole and just hide forever. No, but honestly, <laughs> on, on, honestly, I, I've seen a lot of art, I talk to a lot of artists, and well, for this style and for, I, I don't know, I mean, I've seen a lot and I appreciate what Pixel Kitty does because if you know how she does her work, um, she vectors everything with the mouse. Oh, Pixel Kitty is such a, t- she is a force of nature when it comes to our work. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and she is such a nice girl. Oh I know. God. She, she's awesome. She's a, she's a really nice person. I love Pixel Kitty. She's easy to talk to. She's nice. She's always happy. And, by the way, she has the best voice ever. Indeed. We yeah, she has his adorable voice. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm like, oh my god, I want to hug that boy so tight. <laughs> she is so adorable. She's great. And, and of course, she, she loves her Trixie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, her Trixie. So, anyway... But, um, but yeah, she, she vectorizes everything with a mouse, which I always get mind blown it's by. It's not even vectorized, it's in Photoshop. That's like, wow... What? Yeah. That's Photoshop? Yeah, Photoshop, it's all Photoshop. And shapes. I thought you were using Coral Draw or. No. or um, Illustrator. Uh, uh, or mm. Illustrator. I thought she was using Illustrator, which is vectors. No. That is Photoshop? Photoshop yeah, and. Map in Photoshop. And the thing is, James, she does it with shapes. No pen tool, bro. Mm-hmm. No pen tool. Flip table, switch off the computer, <laughs> walk around. I give up. <laughs> no, but that's seriously, not, but, but, but seriously, there is still hope. If you want to make a comeback, look for Alice Paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I actually would love to collab to make a collaboration with Pixel Kitties. She, she is so busy, however, she's always uh, working uh, on prints for conventions that mm. uh, all these other voice ask. actors ask the, ask her for. Like, if you go to a pony convention and the voice actors have these prints that they are ready for them to sign for you. That's her. They, they have commissioned them to Pixel Kitties. Well, yeah, most likely they have. Yeah. You know what? I, if I go, ever go to a convention, if I get one of those, I'm going to ask the VA to sign and I'm going to hunt down Pixel Kitty and ask her to sign it for me too. Yeah, that's that's so cool. That's a great idea. Yeah. So anyway, mm. let's move Stop on to the next Have you been to any pony conventions, by the way? No, I have not. Uh, the closest I've been to a pony convention was when I was in a, a kind of like a, a, a Comic Con convention here in Granada, uh, which is the, the city where I live in the south part of Spain. Mm. Uh, it was a very, very small convention. It was called Anime Something Something. And the, I call it pony convention because there were a couple of bronies. There was a girl cosplaying as Rainbow Dash, <laughs> awesome. and another guy cosplaying as Dr. Hooves. Mm. And I know it was Dr. Hoofs because he had the cutie mark embroidered in the coat. <laughs> which Perfect. was really cool. And they had like, uh, they had pony swag, like pony necklaces and pony blind bags. And they also sell, they, they were selling this print of Daenerys Targaryen and Khal Drogo from Game of Thrones <laughs> as ponies. <laughs> awesome. So, and but, I was like, oh God, I got one of each. I got one of everything. Because <laughs> it's, uh, come on, it's Game of Thrones ponies. And Game of Thrones and ponies are like the best, two, the two best things ever. True, true. Combined into one. <laughs> oh, Game of Thrones, yeah. No, How but, am um, I going to buy that? But I'm, I'm looking at the map of Spain. And you know, if you take a train ride or, or, well, not a train, but maybe a plane ride to Germany, you can go to Galacon? I don't have the money to do that. Oh. Um, one day, I, one day, we 
show one day of money. I am actually trying to aim to go for a vendor table. Ooh. Yeah, um, it's risky. I should first try to have like a, a normal con experience. Just go to a con as a as a as a normal con goer. Just hey, yeah, I'm going to hang out in the con. Yay, let's take pictures. I'm going to buy some swag. I'm going to spend three hundred dollars on this rarity card that is going to be so useless, and my mom is going to yell me at it for it. <laughs> now, uh, I, I plan on going as a client first, as a normal con goer guy and then very likely just go as a try and go as a vendor mm. well, I, I want to sell buttons I want to sell prints actually I want to sell oh oh I didn't sell I didn't say this with the best pony logos part ooh ah I have, I have someone going at Bronicon who is going to be selling buttons of the best pony uh, designs wow actually they for can, yeah actually down here Norman makes buttons as well so Oh, push you. So they, they asked me for permission. They were like, hey, we love these pony logos. Uh, will you be okay if we turn them into buttons and sell them at Bronicon? We will, we will uh, give you credit. And I'm like, sure, go for it. That, that's why I made them. Um, people, people get confused when I made the best pony logos. They think that I'm going to make a fortune out of it. I didn't actually do it because of that. My original intention was to make them into T-shirts and give all the profit of those T-shirts to charity. Ah. That was my original idea. I want to do I still want to do that. I need to find someone from Will of Fine or any other website that I can give them the designs for it, the the, the, the vectors, so they can turn them into T shirts and I want those the T shirts profits. Like if I could get a cut of the money, I want to give my cut to charity. Mm. It can be like the salvation pony. Yeah. No, it's something like give it to uh uh Get a, ch- a child's play, or uh, so for the for the for the organizations that need help in Uganda or something like that. I cannot. I always have the names of those places in mind, and now I am forgetting all of them. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Well, um, after the yeah, show, I, 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 after the show, I need to talk to you because I uh, I have something. But anyway, um, let's end this before we all go derp. <laughs> yes, please. So well, anyway, um, there was our guest. Um, James, how many times have I said that? Anyway, um, next topic, shout out. My shout out goes to you, James. Thank you for coming on and being an awesome guest. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're, you're so cool. Oh, nice. push. You're being too nice. <laughs> now I'm going to hide in a wall. <laughs> no, come back. Don't leave me here. <laughs> and I'm the one sitting here doing what now? <laughs> and also, um, <laughs> Pixel Kitty, just for being her awesome self. Pixel Kitty, you deserve a shout out. There you go. Your shout out. <laughs> Dan, what about you? I would like to shout out to my choir, Naturally Vocal. You guys did an awesome job at a performance today. And as at the date and time of this podcast being published, <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> yep. And posted and, on Tuesday. Of course. All right, right. I mean, if you make it on time, Tuesday. I was wondering Friday. when you were going to air this. So it's, it's Tuesday, right? Cool. Um, yep, Tuesday. Technically, Tuesday our time. That's Tuesday at 12 p.m. our time, but for the States, it could be, well, maybe Tuesday 12 a.m. their time. Uh, and Europe, it's, huh, I, I'm forgetting Europe, but maybe basically Europe is Tuesday a.m. ish. That's cool. I, I, I can still catch on that. It's still daytime when you. It's not live, so don't worry, it's just uh, plain. Yeah, basically, ah. I'll just Twitter it out, I'll just. Make sure everybody listens to it and go subscribe to you on DeviantArt. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Oof. Oh my God. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> <laughs> and of I course, one more sh- shout out just to James here. Thank you so much for being on. I learned so much today. It's a great episode. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. I'm so happy it turned out okay. <laughs> oh, it's better than okay. If there's and, um, a word for better than okay, I'm Okay. <laughs> And now I'm gonna make you a little mad joke by watching this video. Oh, later on. I'll, I'll watch it later on. No, no, so, no, uh, James, no, for James, for James. Okay. <laughs> oh, what is it? There's a there's a video link in the Skype chat. Just go take a look at it. Oh dear boy, what is it going to be? I'm kind of afraid now. And it's not scary, but it's. Just oh oh oh, oh 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 god! Robin Fluttershy, I was paint. Wow, talent. So boss. Who here has this patience level? 
Uh, you can control. You can control Z man. That one. <laughs> you can only control Z so far in MS Paint. Indeed. <laughs> and after a while, be like, that, no more control. That is kind Z of free. that is kind of pixel art level. It is. You're right. Yeah, it is pixel art. I like I that. Mean, in MS Paint, it'll be like you can control Z, and then oh, no more control Z for you. <laughs> uh, that is really cool. Yeah. So James, what about you? Any shout outs to give out to? Uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to my good old friend uh, Shadow Flair. He is uh, another Spanish brony, and I want to give a shout out because he is working on two fanfics at this point. Uh, he is working on a crossover with Legend of the Five Rings, oh. which is called Legend of the Five Ponies, and he's also working on a fanfic, a shipping fic between Anosi and Miolna. You know the pony with the Mjolnir hammer on oh. Super Speed Six Thousand, yeah, yeah. which is called the Lover's Edda. And he is working on these fanfics. He's putting a lot of effort into it to the point of translated from the old Norse language into English. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes, uh, because the main okay, character, but... this, this OC talks in Norse uh, at the beginning of the fanfic and he <laughs> keeps talking into, into that language for a good length before he learns English. So he is putting a, a ridiculous amount of effort into it and uh, my shout out goes to him. And of course... To both of you guys. Oh, thanks, man. You brought me here. Thanks. Hey, uh, James, <laughs> do link me to your friend's um, film fic page because that story sounds interesting. Good. Will do. Let me go get it. Oh, 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 oh. Before I forget, before I forget, the questions. How could I forget the questions? Oh, my goodness. People have been looking for the questions. Brain and they have... fart! <laughs> yes, indeed. And they have been waiting for patiently. Anyway, um, listen. You have one job. One job. <laughs> Not and really. somehow... Just screw that up. Not really for me, James. I have multiple jobs now. So anyway, the questions, questions. Okay, the question for this week is, list down five of the longest episodes of the MBS show and include the timestamps. So that's five episodes, what the numbers and how long they are. Oh, come on. It's already so easy you have to get that instructions. Well, this is one of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, sometimes... My answer, yeah, but that's, that's it. List down the number of the episode, like say number 1000, and then say how long is that episode, maybe 1000 hours. Who knows? So anyway, good luck guys, and have fun. So if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And if you want to email me personally for stuff, you can email me at norman at the mbsshow.com and daniel at the mbsshow.com and twitters twitter twitter is fun i don't know why i'm going to say that again but twitter is fun that's awesome that's true um, twitter is way too addictive yeah in, indeed ah. so the show's account is at the mbs show my account is at norman sanzo follow me for fun stuff about food and toys recently i got a power ranger morpher belt and that is so fun. much fun. So, fun. then, fun. Yep. what about you? What's your you can Twitter? follow me on Twitter at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. You want your daily dose of rage and... Um, Disappointment? No, more of, you know, I, I was going to say rage against the system, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad joke. Rage bad. against the machine. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I mean, like, for your daily dose of um, pessimism, yes, follow me. Okay, so James, you have Twitter, right? I do, I do. The, my Twitter handle is just, as usual, uh, James uh, Lower Dash Cork. It's that, that simple. I am James Cork everywhere, so type it, search engine, you're going to find me, no problem. I'll just add it in the show notes. So, what can they expect from your Twitter? Uh, you can expect usual, usual breaks into kind of philosophical things. Like, for example, the last thing I posted on Twitter today was, sometimes I look at the internet and I... Look at all the hatred, and I just don't get it. <laughs> Mind blown. I do. <laughs> or other times, you're just going to see me just uh, posting my opinions on on, on pony. I, I post pony from time to time, but it's not all pony. So if you want to break from pony, you, you can follow me. Okie dokie dokie. And then also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And I have been James Cork. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.
I know. It's the that's... wild stallion within. Da, 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 da. I just like that sounds so wrong, though. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Oh, Dan. Like it's, impl- it's implying in something con- entirely different. Oh, Dan. You think I'm badass? Wait till I bring out the dice. Oh, Dan. You, you, you don't want to screw with me with dice, baby. Oh, Dan. You, you've been a bad boy. Anyway, um... Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. No, <laughs> uh, you, you, you don't have enough sleep, have you? Nope, I haven't had much sleep. No wonder. I can't relate. I was, <laughs> I was awake, like, at 6 a.m. yesterday night. <laughs> Uh, waiting for my C2 English proficiency exam notes, uh, the grades, and I was like, oh my god, I cannot sleep, I must know the grade, I must know it. Why don't you just give your lecturer a copy of this show and say that, now I can speak English. <laughs> Sadly, that doesn't... Level English. Sadly, that doesn't work when you just have to do the exam. I, <laughs> I didn't go to class or anything, it's just doing the exam and that's